Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all here to the Citizen Brewery in Tichau, Poland. My name is Mitch Uwe Leslie and we are here for the Wargaming.net EU Season 3 Finals. What a great atmosphere we have here today. Look, we started with 12 teams at the very beginning of the season. We've whittled them down now to six. Six teams have made the trip here to Poland to fight it out for their share of 100,000 euros and, of course, to be crowned Season 3 champions. And before we get too much into the mix, I'd like to pass it over to someone who needs no introduction whatsoever. Over in the social media corner, it's the lovely Melly. Take it away. Thank you, Mitch. Well, hello and a warm welcome from my side as well. I'm Mally, your social media host for the finals. And I'm standing right here in our lovely social media corner where all the coverage for our social media platforms will happen. So if you want to know what exactly I'm doing, just head over to our social media appearances on Facebook and Twitter. You should see them right here and check it out yourself. And if you're already there, just hit the like and follow button to become a part of our network. It's definitely worth it. So, and um, I will keep you updated through all, uh, throughout the whole event, so you won't miss any single action on the, on the venue if you follow those both platforms. So, and of course, we also prepared some challenges for our online and offline audience, but later more to that. I won't keep you any longer from the first matchup of the season three finals here live from Poland. It will be our lovely friends from Evil Panda Squad against Lemming Train. And, um, but, since I love hearing from you, I also upload, I already uploaded a vote on a Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU, where you can vote for your favorite team in this very matchup. So let's see what the community predicts and if they're right. And you can, of course, send me your predictions via Twitter as well. Just use the hashtag WGLEU to make sure that I can read them. So that's pretty much all from my side. I wish you a great match and I'm already excited as hell. So, back to you, Mitch. Thank you, Melly. Well put. Yes, indeed. Don't miss out the opportunity to get involved in the action here, both at home. And if you are here, come and say hello a little bit later on. As Melly mentioned as well, we are in store for a hometown stash between two Polish teams going head to head. No small amount of rivalry there. But let's go and have a look at the first team to hit the stage today. I think we are well prepared, we were training a lot. I think we have a great chance to show everybody that we are the best team now in Poland. I think it's better to uh, play in your home country because you have more fans cheering for you than for the enemy, so yeah, I think it's an advantage. Now we are focusing to play good, don't uh, make any mistakes and do what we can do best to so play on 100% and win the tournament. The biggest, the biggest goal for me is to win the tournament, but the first step is to win with Polish guys and then, then to win with somebody from the Kazna Denova matchup. I think the toughest work for us is the first game. If we win this, we can win easily with the Novo Cousin. To be honest, we are mostly scared of ourselves because last tournament we didn't lose because our enemies were great. I think uh, Virtus Pro and Dignitas will be the hardest opponent here. Uh, other teams are hard too, but not so much like them. We are already are that old and that old team that we are already good vibrations. I think the, the best way for guys is that they want to just they are just trolling me all the time, so this is the best connection for them. Yes, I hope we will win and we'll do anything to do this.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough said, really. So another time, put your hands together for Lemming Train. All right, well, I'm here on the stage with Come On, Captain from the Lemming Train. Now, look, it's been, safe to say, a very up and down season. You guys had a rough start. Tell me, what was the turning point for you guys and, and how, I guess, did you turn such a terrible start into an amazing finish for the season? Uh, what do we do? We just training, we're training more. Uh, Meritorious was an added to our team. And we also have a better team spirit, so... It just went well from the match with playing Ducks and also winning with the Virtus Pro. It was a huge step for us. Sure. So, obviously, you guys are you're Polish. How does playing in front of your home crowd, being at home, how does that change not only the way that you approach this tournament, but the way that you play in each game? Uh, you want the serious answer or the funny answer? Funny answer is that we cannot say much more kurva here, but uh, because everybody will understand. But uh, according to us, it's also much tougher to play against against the Polish squad and against uh, with all these guys watching us, who are who part of them we know or our friends even. Well, thank you very much. Come on, go and join your boys Thanks. and sit on down and get on ready to go. Well. We've met, we've, we've heard from the Lemming Train, should I say. Now let us go and check out the second team to hit the stage. Well, there is always something new about uh, the, battle, uh, the battleground. Uh, every team is preparing something new, uh, some new moves, so uh, there will be plenty to watch. Yes, it's always uh, a big uh, adventure and uh, big pleasure. Well, I feel great that uh, that we play in Poland again. Last time when we played, uh, that was uh, in Katowice, and we managed to win. So it's a great feeling to to be again, uh, especially so close to Katowice. So uh, there is chance to maybe repeat the the, the winning. I think every one of us is uh, quite uh, different person, so everyone is in need to be in need to handle this uh, to his own way. Uh, on the offline event, it's a lot of great teams like uh, uh, Virtus Pro, like Team Dignitas, but uh, we want to, we really want to play with uh, Lemming Train because we, we play with, with them uh, a few months ago uh, on a WCG qualification and we are waiting for this match to take revenge for our lose. We have respect for all teams, but uh, we are not scared of anybody. We are prepared, we are strong mentally, we have a lot of experience from uh, other offline events, so we are not scared. Keep your fingers crossed, every panda is coming. And remember, never say no, no to, to pandas. pandas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have them here on the stage. The terrifying yet awfully cuddly Evil Panda Squad. I'm joined here on the stage by Zinef, captain for Evil Panda Squad. Now, you guys aren't any strangers to playing in front of your home crowd. If we look back to um, Katowice uh, recently last year, you guys um, actually came out and won that event uh, in terrific style. 
to tell us, obviously, not being towards the top of the bracket, you guys sort of, you know, you struggled a little bit to obviously qualify for the finals, but you're here now. Um, what is it that, what is different? Is there any difference between your live performances and online? Do you think you strive uh, to perform better or do you think you just have better luck on the live stage? What's the difference? Well, before, before the LAN, LAN event, we always prepare uh, very strong, so that, that, that's the way. Sure. Now, you guys obviously uh, not having to travel too far for the most part for this event. How have you guys used that time to prepare? Well, basically, we train every two hours uh, every day, so it's, it's, this maybe help us uh, to preparing for the, for the LAN. All right. Thank you very much, Zina, for joining me. Go and join your boys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the boys are pretty much ready to go and roll out, but I think it's about time we checked in with our caster's desk. Now, while cricket may not be their forte, the British have still managed to produce a fine young duo of casters. Ladies and gentlemen, you know them, you love them. It's Pansy and Laughter. You had to get that little dig in there, didn't you? He didn't do it in rehearsals the second time, but you know, when we go live, he had to do it. But still, thank you so much, Mitch and Melly. And it was great hearing from the captains there. These guys seem so ready here. Carmen, I've never seen him look so serious apart from the one thing he can't now say in front of his home crowd. Yeah, I mean, Carmen's always a bit of a character. <laughs> I'm quite interested to see what happens in their first couple of losses if they do lose anything, um, because last time he was pretty volatile. Yeah, and he is right at the front of the crowd, so everyone here will be able to see. So there's no getting away from that. But aside from what we've seen already, let's have a little look back here, because obviously the season, you know, in its full form was some time ago. Let's give you a little refresher of the rankings and the end of it. So Virtus Pro and Dignitas sitting very comfortably at the top there. Those two sailed through, but there was a bit of a bump in the road, and one of those bumps was one of these teams, wasn't it? It was Lemon Train, uh, one of the teams, well, the only team to beat both Virtus Pro and Team Dignitas. Uh, just an incredible run, obviously. You know, Carmen did mention the fact that they had a bumpy start, um, but they really got themselves together. They had that seven-win uh, win streak towards the middle of the season. Just, uh, just incredible, really. It was absolutely phenomenal to watch. There, it was, it was almost a kind of fairy tale to watch them be able to do that. But looking over towards Evil Panda Squad as well, these guys scraped through. I mean, they really had to fight hard in those last couple of games they had. I believe it was Playing Ducks and Odin Mortis were the two victories that really kind of edged them towards it. And my God, did they fight hard! And you know, their online performances are very hard to read into at times. I think this is the best way to look at it. Um, and then you take into account their offline performances. You take yeah. into account how they played at our last season finals. It was like a fresh, brand new team. We heard they have different training regimes, but I don't know if that's enough. Surely there's something here of, you know, sitting next to your teammates, having them right beside you that just gives you that edge. They have experience as well. You've got to remember that they were, they were at the first ever uh, offline event for Wall of Tanks in, in Cologne and I think that was 2011 so you know they've been participating for two three years um, yeah. that gives them so much confidence uh, obviously uh, CNF mentioned the fact that they won in Katowice um, uh, Iron Cat Vitsa, and then they've done, they've done well previously as well I mean their best result in the WGL EU is coming second in season two yeah, now I think the best thing we can do here, I reckon, is look through the brackets to see the possible route that they may have to take going forward. So first game of the day, it's the Polish teams facing off against each other. It's a bit heartbreaking, really. The one of them is already going to be dropped down to really fight hard through this. But Lemming Train against Evil Panda Squad. Now taking into account their season kind of rankings, their finishing positions, on paper, it's Lemming Train's game. But it's offline. You can never read too much into it. I always feel that Evil Panda Squad, no matter where they finish, they finish you know, in the last position to qualify last time, and we saw how far they can go here. But let's look at the other game coming up today as well, Denova against Kazan Crew. That's going to be a real treat as well. Denova and Kazan Crew, I think it's the kind of wild card. It's like the two teams we've always, always been unsure about. Um, Kazan Crew have had an awful run of luck in, in offline events, um, pretty much up until season two finals where they came <laughs> third. That was really their, their first good result. So uh, I'm... Interested to see how you know Dinova's extensive roster changes have kind of affected their gameplay, not just online where they've proven themselves as a good team, but also here at an offline event. Now, Melly mentioned earlier, you guys obviously can get involved via Twitter, via Twitch, via Facebook, all the normal kind of social media routes. Now, I want to give these guys at home a little bit of a help because I can imagine there's going to be some votes up there and there's going to be some gold to be won and there's prizes to be kind of had. So let's get our eyes towards stats. So Evil Panda Squad, for example, we're going to give you a little bit of an insight to what we feel is their strengths here. So accuracy and fight coordination, I feel, are their highest points here. And I feel it's reflected, you know, in the likes of Zenef, Luke, New Multishow, Ace, these guys guys are their big players, but why don't you take us through maybe what we kind of didn't give them higher scores on, so the aggressiveness side? 
Yeah, I, I mean, you can say that aggressiveness is, is just that ability to see an opportunity and just take it. Um, Evil Planet Squad quite, quite enjoy sitting back, being very calculated, only going forwards when they really do see an opening. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, you mentioned accuracy and fight coordination. Accuracy is more about a, a genuine player skill, and obviously they have that. Fight coordination is down to the fact that they have you know, such a long-standing team with pretty much the same players from, from day one. Uh, and obviously decision-making also ties into that, you know, being such an experienced team. Um, and, and, you know, we, we're always a little bit unsure because decision-making is an entirely different thing offline and off, uh, online and offline. Oh, God, yeah. When you have the crowd in front of you, especially a home crowd who are already so vocal, they've been you know, cheering rehearsals, let alone when we went live. We like them already. You know, that's a lot of pressure. You know, they are their, even, you know, I think it was Carmen said, that's their friends out there. And speaking of Carmen and those guys, let's head over and look at those Lemming Train stats to give you a little idea of what we feel were their strengths and their weaknesses through the season. Because they're a very different team to Evil Panda Squad. Very unique, very, very creative. We gave them, for some of the plays they came out with, was so brilliant, but their accuracy, we always felt let them down. And it was reflected in the stats quite harshly, I know. But still, you know, they have their outstanding players. They, they have their, you know, their butchers who are hitting 70 54% accuracy. That is ridiculously high for a whole season. But then, you know, they don't ever depend on it, though. I feel as though the mid-tier players, who aren't necessarily the ones doing all the damage, never excel as far, in my eyes. Mm. But the creative side and the decision-making, that's miles ahead. These guys are always the first ones to innovate in terms of tanks. You know, they, 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 sometimes it doesn't work. They took like a double grill on Ensk against Team Dignitas. just didn't <laughs> work at all. But, you know, they've also been taking stuff like the 416 first, the, the Waffle Tiger, the Waffen Tiger. Um, yeah. So these guys just willing to, to push out the boat a little bit, try something new. And it does show in the results, 12 to 4 in, in the, uh, the online stage. Um, it does work at the end of the day. So um, definitely a proven track record. But uh, I think they have to tone it down a little but here they have to go for that consistency as opposed to you know really throwing everything into the wind and just saying okay let's try this and let's hope it, w it works yeah that that's a big thing in my eyes here as well is the fact that they they've got to find that balance because it's mm. very easy to get you know, over excited you've got a crowd you've got the finals you've got a lot of money on the line here and you want to give everything you've got now these two have met a hundred times before you know not, not just talking about the official games, the practice games. They know what they're up against, and they have to make sure they're on that perfect keel where they're not too aggressive, not too defensive. They're not just throwing things out there, just hoping that they work. But I very doubt they will be. They seem pretty uh, well secured here. And I hope we can get those stats head to head so you can kind of see our feelings towards how these both guys are doing and how they've kind of progressed through the season. We gave you the background to it. But in my eyes, it's all about today. You know, every team has their day to be brilliant. And in my eyes, generally, Evil Panda Squad have theirs when the big money's on the line. That's where they come into their own. That's when they show their strength. But I don't think we can de deny Lemming Train's late season performance. That's the big thing. How can you? It's unbelievable to read. Lemming Train just get better and better through the season. There's every single season they have that massive win streak and they just carry on going, carry on going and they just seem to improve and improve. Mm -hmm. you know, Karl was talking about the roster changes, they had Materius in there, a brilliant Russian player, really, really helped their team out. They had that team spirit from coming second only to Na'Vi at the uh, NVIDIA GeForce Finals uh, in Seattle. So um, that gave them a, a lot of boost because obviously I was speaking to them in, in, in Gamescom and they were saying, you know, uh, things are not going so well for us. Yeah. You know, we're really down in the dumps. Uh, and if it doesn't go well it's, uh, at, uh, at PAX, uh, and in the video GeForce Finals, then we, we really have to consider our future. Now, you know, after such a brilliant season, they're here, they're rearing to go, and you know, you can, you can really hear how enthusiastic Carmen is uh, as their manager of how well they're expecting to do. Well, with all the facts in mind, make sure you head over to all the social media platforms that we told you about and get involved. We've given you all the background, so maybe you've got a little bit of an idea who you think is going to be the victor, but let's get towards those map choices. Absolutely key for both these teams. Very unique styles, very different styles to each other, very much different. Now, what maps do you feel will suit, let's say, Evil Panda Squad here? So Evil Panda Squad, quite a passive team. Um, so, I, and I know they're like the heavy tank play, so Himmelsdorf is, is, is I think, a given, but Himmelsdorf's a given for almost every team. They all seem to like it, apart from question OMs. question on that, instance. then. Do you think they'll use the aggressive style that we saw them coming out with in the Season 2 offline finals? Because they were really, really aggressive then. They went for that straight charge. It's about catching your opponent off guard. Um, obviously, Himmelsdorf has a limited amount of options, so uh, it's always a little bit hard to play. But Ruhmberg being cancelled out here, obviously um, not wanting that middle engagement, it's always a little bit of a strain. 
at, to play. Yeah. Um, hit and miss, I feel. Very hit and miss. Yeah. Um, and I've seen them struggle on that map, so that's perhaps not such a big surprise here. Um, obviously, uh, we have seven maps in the map pool. Mm. Two maps get banned out, apart from in the finals, where uh, it will just be all seven maps banned. Second map ban is that Prokhorovka. Now, why do you think that's gone out there? Now, I don't think any of these teams are specifically weak on it. Do you just think they don't have their strengths there against the opponents? I'm actually quite surprised by this. Uh, straight up, I'm surprised because uh, Lemming Train, really, they have that Russian play style where they, they, they work with uh, wolf packs. They have loads of AMX 3090s. Yep. They can coordinate on a big map, on a big map uh, with lots of tanks. Yep. Uh, so Prokhorovka being out is, is always a little bit strange. Um, perhaps that's probably Evil Panda Squad's ban. Uh, and that's why they want to get rid of it. They know how strong Lemming Train is on this map. Yeah, and we are seeing uh, what could be the decider being steps there. Mine's actually being the fourth uh, coming through. Normally it's Mine's being the deciding map, isn't it? It's a little bit of a switch up there. So very curious to see what map one's going to be. Because you want to get that confidence beside you straight away. That's the big thing there. It's all about getting that initial advantage. We know, as you said, maybe if Mel start losing here, or sorry, excuse me, Lemming Train now, start losing straight off the bat, they could be in real trouble. That kind of confidence they had built up could crumble very quickly because everyone knows Evil Panda Squad getting to their strength when in these sort of atmospheres. So Abby coming in as map three. Now, who do you think, what, what sort of uh, star do you think we're going to see for these uh, last remaining maps that will be chosen? So Himmelsdorf is quite a nice first pick um, as the first map because it kind of sl slides you into the I into the matches. And I don't feel you've given away too much either on Himmelsdorf unless nope. they go for the aggressive exactly. push. Exactly. There's very limited options and, you know, it's it's literally just down to that heavy tank player. You know, do you, do you block for your tanks? Do you have that coordination? Um, do you have that forward thinking? Do you use your T1s well? All that kind of thing. But Himmelsdorf will be the second map. Uh, so, so far, map five is steps, four mines, th three is Abbey, and now two is Himmelsdorf. First map of the day will be Ensk, mm -hmm. that uh, kind of Russian-esque uh, uh, 600 by 600 meter map. So the smallest map in the map pool, very interesting to watch. Very curious choice, because I always seem to throw my mind back to when, uh, I think it was when they were under the title of Mouse Sports, they played Virtus Pro on that, and they tried a very unique strategy the first time they faced off mm. in Season 3, and it didn't go well. They were very passive, they sat back in that square, the coordination just did not happen at all, and it fell apart. Virtus Pro just unraveled it. The second time I met, however, they'd already adapted that strategy. I believe, was it the Waffle Tiger they used on that one? I think it may have been. They've used the Waffle Tiger a couple of times, especially from the south. Um, yeah. You know, they just put it back behind. They put the, the IS-3s and the 5100s mm. uh, up into that square to the right uh, or to the left of the, yeah. of the railroad. And they kind of hunkered down a bit. They used a Waffle Tiger behind just to support them. Use the 5100s in there as well. Yeah. Also up that train road. So, yeah, they, they like to hunker down. They like to let the other teams come onto them. It's quite strange because Lemming Train is a pretty aggressive team. Um, but it really does depend on that spawn. And to be fair, I really like the way they adapted. The way you said that they always kind of lured the enemy in. That's what they did with that Waffle Tiger. And they had that kind of defensive setup, but they kind of made them draw down into that, you know, gun's kind of uh, sight pretty much. And as soon as that thing gets a shell connected, you've got a big chunk of damage coming your way. So I think they're almost ready for those tank picks. Now, I think we can kind of start discussing what sort of tank choices we're going to be seeing here because it's been a while since, you know, the last season uh, kind of came to a close and we saw season three online section coming to a close. Um, what sort of choices do you think we'll be seeing coming through? Any new adaptions, do you think? Or do you think it's going to be the same tried out, tested setup? Well, since the, the online section actually came to a close, it's, it's, there's only been one patch, 8.10, uh, and that really didn't change anything for these guys. Uh, there's not really that many tanks added. There's only a couple of new maps, which we obviously are not going to change in the middle of a season. So yeah. no change there. Uh, but in terms of the tanks they're going to pick, I think obviously the given is the IS-3 and the 5100. Whether these guys pick you know, a Waffle Tiger, for instance, is, is really up to them. Uh, just today. I think one will. I think it also depends on that spawn. I was discussing that a little bit uh, earlier. If uh, Let Me Train get the southern spawn, then they might be looking towards that tier 8 German tank destroyer. Um, from the north, I'm not a massive fan, though. I think it, no, it's, uh, it, you have the same positioning, does Exactly. It? And, and, you know, we've seen a lot of teams start to like that green zone push a lot more. So it kind of struggles when you have a very, very weak frontal armor. I didn't even remember that the green zone really started being used towards the end of the season. That kind of right side of the map was almost ignored for the first you know, bit of season two, first bit of season three, and then suddenly it's a viable option. Everyone seemed to give it a try. Everyone thought maybe this is a possibility. Do you reckon we might see that today? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, I think what's nice about Ensk is that it's been played so much uh, and for so long is that 
it's really up to the teams. I mean, yeah, we saw it over, we've seen the green zone a lot recently, but there's no reason why they can't push that city side either. So, um, also it depends on the tank picks. Um, uh, the green zone can be, can be a, a quite hard uh, place to play because once you've committed to pushing up uh, past the, the middle of the map, then you really have committed. And if you don't get it nailed down, you're going to almost certainly lose because you have no cover apart from some destructible logs. Yeah, and we have not seen any kind of unique tanks coming out here. They have gone back down to basics. That, and I don't blame them. This is the first game of the offline finals. Now, let's bear in mind, if you do kind of go through in this higher bracket sort of format, you get such a better ride out of this one. But just the IS-3s, the 5100s, and I believe that's that's mirrored, isn't it? They're going for the exact same um, lineup here. Only little change, and that's... Uh uh, Evil Panel Squad are picking the double IS-3, the triple 5100. Right. Lemming Train have gone for that uh, switcheroo, the triple IS-3, double 5100. So uh, Lemming Train just have high alpha damage, while Evil Panel Squad, they have that penetrative ability. Um, they have that burst damage from the uh, SA-47. But uh, realistically, it's such a situational difference that um, it's more about what kind of engagement these two have. And, and right. maybe that's what this game's going to come down to, which team will choose a better engagement depending on the tanks they have. Very, very curious stuff here. You can see the last kind of couple of chats happening between these players, making sure they're all on the same page, making sure they're ready, getting everything absolutely secure in their minds. You don't want to be going in with any doubts to what you're going to be doing. These guys have been practicing, you know, during the downtime from the online section to the offline section, they may have had a little bit of a testing time, maybe relaxed a bit, but from what we heard, these guys have been practicing non-stop. So I can imagine they'll be absolutely on point here. These guys have played before, they've played on this map, they know what they're going to be coming up against, and I'm very interested to see how they adapt, how they decide to change things around. Are they going to change things around? It's all these questions will we start seeing, you know, coming to a point here. Who's going to go for the adaption? Who's going to stay to the you know, tried and tested methods? And you know, some of these teams, very creative, as we mentioned before. Some, not so much. More dependent on the individual talent. So I believe they're almost ready to get underway here. And I, I'm so excited for this. Quickly, which team's going to get the first map? Ooh, that's a hard question. I, uh, I, I, would, I would give it to Evil Panda Squad. Evil Panda Squad. It's, it's, I'm that, just... that is really harsh. Yeah, that, that is, uh, that's a bit of a hard call there. But I, I can see why. I, I kind of get that. Is there any p specific reason you want to go for them? Not really. It's one of those things where it's just I'm kind of rooting for the underdog here. Although Evil Panda Squad did beat okay. them quite a few times before. Um, I don't know. I've got a funny feeling. Probably going to be wrong, but still, I'll, right. I'll have a go. I'll Evil go Panda for Mouse Sports yeah, just, yeah. just to be devil's advocate. So guys, get yourselves ready. We are almost to just on the very verge of getting underway in the game. So let's get that video rolling. The one, the only, Ensk. Ensk is a simple map on the face of it, but requires the most skillful team play to play properly. Being such a small map at 600 by 600 meters, the areas of attack are confined to through the city, through the railroads, or through the green zone. The fearsome city side often famed for its fierce firefights, the railroads and green zone areas are hard to play as they have many death alleys. The railroads provide little cover but good sniping locations. Tanks can shoot over and navigate through the trains to ambush and weaken the opposition. When playing Ensk, always keep in mind that teams may try and rush for the cap and not go for the city brawl. Also, take tanks that can both deal a lot of damage and react quickly to situations. So, as you can see, Ensk has been told you by the ever-delightful Joe Miller. We keep him in the cupboard, ready for offline events. Sadly, not able to show his face, though. But you can see the two team stats head-to-head. -head. They're very, very close. We tipped it on paper to Lemming Train, but we all know that Evil Panda Squad can certainly turn up when it matters in the offline kind of results here. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this game. I think it's going to really show us what we're going to be seeing throughout this tournament. So guys, let's uh, get underway this one. In the north, in the golden yellow, it will be Lemming Train, previously known as Mouse Sports, and in the south, Evil Panda Squad in blue. And what are we seeing so far? So it doesn't look like uh, Lemming Train are actually going over towards that green side. So. Uh, obviously, with that uh, double IS-3 lineup, they really like the city engagements. They've got the, th the three 5100s to provide that 
firepower from the background, but Evil Panda Squad doing the exact opposite. Just <laughs> charging over towards that green side, wanting to get those positions early on. But I think for Lemming Train, they can be pretty confident because um, as soon as they don't spot some tanks in the first, let's say, two minutes, charging up from the south, they can be pretty confident going over towards the green zone because, you know, if you're going into the city from the south, if you just charge forwards, you can get a lot better positions. Yeah, you can already see those turrets starting to turn towards that green zone from Lemming Train, really looking towards it, and they're looking in the right place. New Mold Show and Co. making the way forward down that six to nine line, and uh, Sky Spirit, they're just kind of just spotting things out in that dear little tier one, and we, you know, as we say dear little, these tier ones can really define moments on this map, especially such an important factor here, getting those caps underway, re-countering the pressure that Lemming Train could put on here, and I'm waiting to see the counter movement from Lemming Train. They've, they've obviously got the idea now there's no one really around this city area let's assume they're at that six to nine line we know they can play it how do they counter it now well i think for for lemming train they just need to not panic and, and not do anything brash um evil panel squad they're they're playing pretty aggressively actually they're, that they almost uh, 100 percent confident that lemming train is nowhere to be found in the green zone obviously they think okay maybe a couple of tier ones will be here which they're not they're actually head over towards the uh, b a line, the 4-5 uh, area, but for, for Lemming Train, I think they can move out from that city. That's their original starting position. They can get themselves comfortable. They can work themselves into the map because currently Evil Panda Squad do have that map control. Uh, they have the whole green side, uh, while only Lemming Train have about half of the, uh, the city side. Interesting play from Numolcha, they're actually coming back a fair way. He was one of the first tanks to kind of really edge up with that tier one. He was really pushing it, maybe playing a bit more defensive here. Good read coming out. Now, let's bear in mind, very few tanks have been spotted. I actually believe no one's been spotted yet. So, but in my eyes, in World of Tanks, it's not just what you can see, it's what you can't see. You know, already, Lemming Train will know, okay, they're not in that city area. They're already pushed up over the F line. They're starting to kind of congregate down towards the opposition's flag. Whereas it's the exact same thing from Evil Panda Squad. On this side, Materius doesn't let a shell fly. No connections yet. They're just trying to get those blind shots through. And that's why I find you know, that accuracy being so high for some of these players, such an impressive stat. that It's absolutely unbelievable to watch. Now, I'm just very curious to see where the uh, Lemming Train guys really start focusing towards you know they're, they're starting to work their way through the city they know what's happening now they are well and truly aware there's no cap going on just yet how do they make sure they're in the advantageous position from you know kind of coming from the back foot here well you need to sacrifice something and obviously the first sacrifice in any team has to be that t1 um you don't want to be sending an is3 or 5100 obviously a tier 8 tank into the, into the thick of things without really knowing what you're sending into so um a t oh, brilliant shot from materials taking wow. out sony uh, the team captain of uh, of Evil Panda Squad there. Um, first frag going to Lemming Train. Surprising, uh, maybe not a, a crucial blow because um, it does take a lot more than a tier one to to get the win. But it does give you that little edge in terms of sp uh, spotting ability and also capping ability, which is quite important on Ensk. Yeah, I was about to say the late game. If you get rid of those two tier ones, really does go into your favour because you know you still got an option. You can still go for those counter caps. And at the moment, it's almost like a Mexican standoff, just staring each other down over the drill roads. There's the reply coming through. Snip has been taken out of the tier one for Lemming Train, so he's going to be out of this. But still, it's a fairly you know similar starting point here. But I'm just waiting to see who's going to be the braver team to make that first move. Luke just kind of edging around. He's looking for a way through. Ace set up perfectly waiting. And these guys are just you know playing quite defensive now. They've kind of split their forces. Ace doesn't actually catch a glimpse in of anyone. He's just you know letting the shells fly, hoping they might get a connection. It's not going to be that lucky this time. But five minutes and 47 seconds left you know it looks like lemon train are actually falling back here well they knew that um at least a couple of tanks in towards the south because of well from the towards the north because they got that kill on that tier one so um both teams have an idea materials took out sony um and that was replied uh taking out snip there so i think they have a good idea but it is end so it's, it's such a small map being you know only 600 by 600 so uh, you can travel from north to south in about, let's say, one and a half minutes, uh, obviously depending on the tank you have. Uh, but it's, it's about that first move. And obviously, this being the first match of uh, the Season 3 Finals, uh, you don't want to be the first one to lose because that will give you a bad start and it might just set you uh, along a, a very nasty road. Now, let's kind of throw our minds back to what Lemming Train said in that interview. You know, it was literally, it wasn't the opponents who beat us. It was us almost kind of giving them the game. We made the mistakes that cost us a lot of games in season two finals. Now, 
them playing a little bit more defensively, a little bit more cautiously, is probably them just being, not scared, but just kind of hedging their bets. They don't want to go and give the game away right now. So it is allowing Evil Panda Squad maybe a little bit more roaming ability. They can just kind of take their time, do as they please. But there's still a very defensive Lemming train just waiting if they try and make a move. Now, looking at the feasibility of things here, where do you think that move's going to come? Because if, let's say, you know, Evil Panda Squad, oh, they've actually spotted out near Pizzoni there. So maybe there can be a little bit of movement now. There's been very few spots. It's been a very cautious game. What sort of information do you think that's kind of fed to Evil Panda Squad from just getting that spot there? Well, it, it gives them a little bit of information because they at least have an idea of where one damaging tank is, uh, the IS-3, but um, it, it doesn't give them much. Obviously, we can see everything we can see on the minimap where all the tanks are, so we have a good idea where they're going to push. Obviously, uh, Lemming Train should push up into the north, judging by the amount of firepower Evil Panel Squad have that have there. Um, but instead, they're actually trying it through the, the railroads. They sent a couple of tanks there, uh, but they've been spotted, so they kind of have to reverse because they know Zenef, who was actually shooting, and now he's on reload, who could got some shots out there. Um, he, he's not going to be able to. Uh, about a 50-second reload on the AMX-51100, so he's got to be careful. But uh, what's nice about Lemming Train is that they're all at least connected by line of sight are all very close to each other. Well, Evil Panda Squad kind of have tanks, you know, in the north, in the south. So one concerted push from Lemming Train will just crush them. Yeah, and they seem like they're chomping at the bit here. They want to get into this one. You can see the blind shots coming out, but they're not taking it just yet. They're kind of like teasing Evil Panda Squad, like, guys, come on, you know where we are now. Do you want to come and try and, you know, force a mistake out of them almost? But Evil Panda Squad still being fairly passive, playing sensibly. You can see Nils Pizzoni there trying to find a bit of a new angle. Do see another tier one falling actually. That's Carmen out of there, the man you heard just at the start. So that is Lemming Train losing both tier ones. Does this signify they need to make a move? There's two minutes and 43 seconds left, or is it time to sit back and play this one defensively? Well, it gives, uh, it, well, it eradicates one option for, for Lemming Train because you know you have two options basically in a game you can either cap or you can kill. Uh, you can also win on, on tier points as well, so a bit of both, I guess. Um, but Lemming Train, for instance, they can't split push the tier ones into the cap and, and, and also send their, their uh, damage leading tanks uh, into a brawl. So um, definitely an advantage for Evil Panda Squad now, uh, but they haven't really capitalized on it. Although you can see Eclipse and, uh, and Zenith on that mini map starting to head over uh, towards, uh, the, to, well, to join up towards their, their other tanks uh, towards their base. So. They just need to get themselves consolidated. They have a good idea where Lemming Train are because they were spotted up in, in C5. You can see the pings coming up from the, from, uh, the team captain there. Um, but for Lemming Train, they almost have that sixth sense of such an experienced team that they're starting to gather themselves up into a defensive position, get that infamous fire line going. Um, and if Evil Panel Squad do end up charging in there, obviously the tank that's stationary almost always gets the first shell, and not only the first shell, but the first connection. Uh, and this is dangerous times one minute and 33 seconds left. If either of these teams make that first move, this could be real trouble because the next map coming up will be Himmelsdorf if we draw this one out. Let's keep that in mind now. But still, this is a very, very treacherous situation. Naming Train pushing forward, testing the water. Don't find much. They're going to back away again. But Evil Panda Squad did the same. They've been going back and forth, kind of now right down at the back. And this is so, so tentative. If one player makes a mistake, this could cost them the game, and that is what you can see basically being on their minds right now. Exactly. It, it's all about those mistakes uh, at this level of gameplay. Um, it's just about the team that makes the, the, the least amount of small mistakes. You know, uh, quite often in random battles, for instance, they're huge mistakes, like leaving a whole flank uh, open. Everyone, everyone knows that feeling. Um, but for these guys, it's, it's about those small mistakes, like having a tank two meters in the wrong direction, for instance. Uh, but, you know, when these guys did play at uh, WCG, uh, they actually ended up playing three hours um, uh, to try and uh, find out oh. who actually ended up qualifying for that. Obviously, it was Lemming Train there, um, but you can see how close these teams are, how unwilling they are to push forward, because they know if they do, the other team is not only going to be prepared, but they also know exactly how they're going to play it out. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's written across them in the game style and the way they're playing here. Every single member is on tender hooks almost. No one wants to make that error. Now, let's bear in mind this is the first map. This is them just kind of finding out where, you know, what the team's going to be playing like because Evil Panda Squad, you know, they, they played aggressive before. The map will be coming to a close. This will be a draw for the first game here. So no one does make that mistake. A little bit of a sigh of relief almost coming out from both of these guys. So first game there, going to be completely drawn out. The tier ones were lost, excluding one for, I believe, Evil Panda Squad. And that was Sky Spirit staying alive.
But excited that year, they lost two tier ones for Lemming Train, Common and Snip were down. So that's their late game almost out of there. They can't depend on that. And you know, with Sony down for Evil Panda Squad, that kind of fallback plan that the tier ones are so good at just gets taken away. And immediately you start second guessing, do we go for that Ruinberg style fight where it's just kind of like going head to head, hoping you maybe get those better shots in. And we know that, you know, Lemming Train aren't the best aimers in the world. Sorry, guys. Um, so <laughs> you don't want to just depend on that. You can't just go in just hoping that it goes your way. Not in this situation. Yeah, well, exactly. You know, if you can't, if you can't really rely on that, uh, that aim, you know, sometimes I think Lemon Train can't hit a barn door. Um, but still, if you can't rely on that, you can rely on a lot of other things which they do have. For instance, uh, just decision making. They have a lot of creativity. Um, I haven't seen any creativity so far, but as, no. as you said right, quite rightly, they're getting themselves warmed up in here. Um, they've had a, an early start, so they just wanted to get themselves ready. Here's uh, that team manager, Carmen on your screen now. Uh, damage per game, obviously not too high because he plays that tier one, mm -hmm. but he has played a lot, 85 battles. Yeah, that's, that's actually quite a huge amount. Normally they sit around like the 60s, but he's been in every single one pretty much. That's, that's why he's the uh, team captain there, so the most vocal man pretty much of the guys on the right side of your screen. And you can see them just chanting through, very calm. No one quite, you know, getting riled up just yet. And these guys just need to stay like that. They need to stay calm, collected, and make sure they don't start getting edgy and nervous because Himmelsdorf was a very hit and miss map, I always feel with Evil Panda Squad. They never quite could play it in a very, um, let's say, a usual manner and do well. Sometimes they'd play it out and be phenomenal, though. So it's, it's very hard to predict. And they, they seem very happy to be on camera. <laughs> they are. They certainly are. They are beautiful faces, so that's always good. But uh, we are ready to get into our second battle. Uh, we were playing that uh, map of Ensk. Um, Evil Panda Squad versus Lemming Train. If you're just joining us for the Season 3 Finals, here in Tihe, Poland. I'm pretty sure I haven't got that oh, pronunciation yeah, quite right. For, the pronunciation, you brave man. I, I, I've, I've tried. I had it explained to me quite a few times. It's not as bad as Jean Kuping, which was obviously the uh, DreamHack finals of season one, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting there. Um, but yeah, here we go. It's uh, Evil Panda Squad starting from the south. Uh, Lemon Train starting from the north again. Same start as last time. Uh, Evil Panda Squad heading over towards the right side. And Lemon Train, no. Instead, going over towards the right side, the same as Evil Panda Squad, not going towards the city. That's good because they've seen that they've seen what Evil Panda Squad are doing. They've adapted, and they've got obviously got a plan because you know on a map like Ents where you do have a limited amount of plans, you know what to do against a team that pushes over towards the green side. You know what to do against a team that pushes over towards the city side. Yeah, and those reloads are slowly but surely becoming available. You can see the uh, kind of bars almost trickling across there just under their names. And as soon as that is ready, and already, I've got to say it, at the moment, Lemming Train look like they're in a good position. Do you think from the north side they have a bit of an advantage coming out to the green zone? They also have an advantage because, yeah, they have an advantage because they spotted most of the Evil Panda squad um, as, as they went through. They put the tanks with the, the good view range, obviously not the tier one. That's why Lucas ESD has taken a pretty big shot there. He's down to 1 1 2 4. And also Skyro Spirit's taking a little bit of damage in his T1. Yeah, he's in trouble. There's two tanks right around him. He may be getting the spots, but <laughs> at the moment, he stayed alive last time. I don't think he's going to be so lucky now. Oh, no, he's going to be taken down. That's Polomako coming through. But you can see the shells are going to be starting to fly here. Materius and Polomako are in a bit of a treacherous situation. Got to be careful. And let's see how this one plays through. Yeah, exactly. They've got to be very careful. There's just straight roads between them and the uh, opposition. You can just look up towards that right side of the uh, bars. And you can see the tier points these guys have. 41 to the side of Yupan has got 42 to the side of Lemming Train. Um, do let uh, Melly know, our social media, guru, social media guru, what you think of this interface. It's brand new. Uh, and we are going to be improving it as we go through. But Evil Panda Squad uh, retreating back towards the base and um, maybe thinking of, of an altar plan. But Lemon Train, they're just they're urgent to go forwards. They're really biting at the bit to just get this one going and, and just try something against Evil Panda Squad because uh, it's, it is best of five, so they can obviously throw a map. And just throwing a map for the sake of knowing what the other team's doing is, is, is a worthy throw. Yeah, and that shell connecting onto new multi-show really does some damage, considering he's there pretty much their best player damage-wise. For Evil Panda Squad, he's sitting very much at the top there. Um, you've got to be looking after him, and they are making that rotation now. And let's let's kind of look back to that first time we watched this map. Lemming Train did use that city side. They may feel more comfortable here from the north on it, and they've kind of forced the hand of Evil Panda Squad to come back through. So maybe already taking a little bit of the lead here. They still have both Tier 1 standing. They have the advantage pretty much at this moment, HP-wise, positional-wise, and I'm curious to see how they intend to kind of push that further. I think they're going to go for the city push. Um, so, you know, they've got uh, 
uh, three three i3s as evil pan squad uh, i think in in a city engagement obviously you want that uh, you want the alpha damage because if you go for just the quick snapshots um, you have one shot to make it count and obviously the more damage you do the better the shot is um, but when it comes to just a charge and, and a flank the 5100 completely outshines the is3 um, uh, but again, you know, it just goes back and forth. So at the end, the late game, you want an IS-3 alive because you know, it's quite likely that both teams won't have very much HP, so you want to do as much damage as possible. But also, you only have like an 11 second reload compared to the 45 second reload on the M MX-5100. Um, but obviously, once it does reload, you can pretty much go one against four. Uh, but Evil Panel Squad starting to edge up in towards the middle of the city. This is what we see of quite a few teams from the south. Um, but Lemming Train have gone towards where they started in game one uh, in their kind of starting positions uh, and uh, I think they are pretty much prepared for anything that Evil Panda Squad do end up chucking at them. We're going to have to see there. You can see them all getting a little bit edgy now. That's the thing. They all want that victory. They've kind of had a little bit of a taste of it. They've seen the opponents. They know where they're heading. Eclipse is getting... Uh fairly close to the opposition they're not far away at all and considering that three-man cluster of lemming train already rotating around they could catch someone on their own but at the moment still very cautious these guys are actually fully rotating here are they going back over to the green side right now uh, they definitely are um but also you can see they've uh, left a materius in the is3 over towards the uh, just the track train zone uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do with Nia Pozzoni there. I'm not sure if he's going to go over towards the green side or is he going to join Materius there um, up towards uh, yeah the train side. But um, that's pretty much his position is just played because uh, since the T69 is, in my opinion, not viable anymore, uh, in some extreme cases it is, like on Ruenberg, but in general it's not as good as a 5100 or an IS-3 since uh, the changes to the M348 ammunition taking it down to only 250 penetration. Yeah, and I think right now we need to kind of throw our eyes towards what Lemming Train are doing. They're pushing the cap point here. They have, you know, the tier one advantage. Do you reckon they're going to try and use it? They certainly are. They, I think they are. But um, Sony, he is ready and waiting uh, about 250, perhaps 300 meter view range on that tier one, depending on, you know, the equipment he has and the crew skills. These guys are obviously playing on tournament counts, so they have all uh, crew skills available to them. A couple of snapshots coming out there from Poto Mako, not connecting anything, but they've got plenty of time to do whatever they want. Four minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. It only takes uh, one minute and 50 seconds with one tank to cap. Yeah, and right now we are seeing Materius now getting himself into that cap circle. One minute and 35 seconds for this to be halted. Now this is a bit of a teaser, I can imagine, trying to draw Evil Panda Squad back in. This will make the action go down here. Butcher does take a shell down to 817 HP. You can see Sony still trying to keep eyes on. Alien laying down the fire as well. These guys are going for a little bit of a back and forth. Ace coming down towards... Yeah, Cap Circle himself looking for his way through. He's fairly low though. 894 HP. You can see the spots coming through. Polo Mako sitting very healthy. Just tucked into the corner. Zenith as well. Great line of sight down there. Trying to find the angle. Nice shot connects towards Alien. You can see Ace is going so low. 242 HP. He's in trouble. Three tanks nearly steps away. 22 seconds left. This could be all over very, very quickly here. Quickly the Cap does get reset. Eclipse goes down. That's Polo Mako doing the job. The reply swiftly from Lucas D comes in. And now we are seeing the game slowing down a touch, but not for long. Already Lemming Train closing in here, looking for the way through. Butcher finding Ace. That means a big advantage forming for the Lemming Train, the team who took the initiative. Here's Pizzoni making it so much worse now, as these guys now just battling through. 1 minute and 22. They're not even looking at that time right now. They're looking for the opponents, and Zenef is the next target. Aliens just fallen. Nears Pazoni and Materius looking hungry to get in here because only New Mold Show and Zenef are left alive. But New Mold Show is coming off that reload in about 10 seconds in his 5100, so he'll be able to get himself in this game real quick. And obviously, he is the Unicom of Evil Panda Squad, uh, but only 393 uh, uh, HP left on his tank, and that's almost a one shot for, for an IS3. HP aside, we've got five seconds for New Mold Show to pull something off here. Already seeing Materius trying to go hunting down Zenith, but I think time has run out for Evil Panda Squad, and it will be Lemming Train just smashing this one through. These guys are pretty damn happy already with that result. Carmen's up and standing. Round of applause for that one, guys. The team who took the initiative took the first game. Nia Pazorni, look how much damage he did. 2.2k in the IS3. Such a good addition to that team. Uh, amazing game for him, obviously. Uh, a pat on the back to that guy. Uh, first up for, for Evil Panel Squad was New Multi Show with 1.5k uh, 
uh, damage done in his AMX 5100. He got the initial damage down, but that's the problem with the 5100. He had to get on the reload, and he was just too late to the party. Uh, he couldn't get himself into the cap to reset it. So just a brilliant push by Lemming Train. They had a perfect strategy, uh, managed to creep the tanks in in the perfect positions uh, uh, just to get themselves capping. Evil Panda Squad tried to get in, but you saw the kind of damage that was put onto them. Uh, you know, Lucas Yisti went down real quick. Ace couldn't do anything, only managing to do 387 damage, which is one shell in an IS3. It's not what you need to be doing in this Certainly sort of not. situation. Now, okay, so first map, it's going to Lemming Train. Now, let's kind of cast our mind forward a touch here because the next map is going to be Himmelsdorf. Now, already the water's been tested. They know how people are playing at this moment, maybe one, two maps in, pretty much. But is that enough to really kind of expect what's coming through here? Because you can already see, like, there's Pizzoni right there. You know, one, one, two, three, best player throughout that whole game there. His damage per game is pretty much insane there. That's a nice, good average to hit. That's a, that's a pretty sweet average <laughs> there. Um, but yeah, he, he's a really fantastic player. I mean, he, he's really consistent, which is really nice to see. KD ratio almost up to two, so um, just, uh, just a really good guy there. But that's the thing about Lemming Train there. Pretty much a superstar team. Almost yep. every single one of their players is able to bring out a game like that and get themselves into the right position. Uh, and they'll need all those skills they demonstrated on Ensk, even more so on a map like Himmelsdorf, where it's even more rigid and, and you have less options. So as I said before, it's down to that just heavy tank ability, who can block for your, for your team, who can get the damage down, uh, who can just have the player ability just to push around into the right situation at the right time. See, and in my mind now, it's, it's kind of trying to work out where Evil Panda Squad are, because last time they played Himmelsdorf, just think back to the Season 2 Finals. They went absolutely crazy. They pulled a bit of a spail there and just pushed straight through, completely challenged out the opposition, mm -hmm. and they went for it, and it worked, and you know, it really caught the teams off guard. I don't think they're going to be able to pull that one off again. Is there any other kind of adaption route they could run for? Because that wasn't the evil panda squad that we knew from the last finals. They were quite passive, quite defensive. They didn't take the initiative. They allowed Lemming Train to take the reins there. I just think that's kind of what cost them a little bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I mean, you know, with the push on Himmelsdorf, it's, it's literally about pushing the uh, battle line forward. So if you push into the center, instead of having those kind of uh, houses, uh, the hold down houses in, uh, on your side of the map, you have the hold down ha uh, houses on the other side of the map and you push the team back. But also what it allows is, is those same houses, they have uh, streets in between, uh, the other team can flank in, they can get behind, they can do a serious amount of damage. As you said, you know, we've seen loads of times Virtus Pro failing miserably uh, to do that push. But again, you know, there's a reason why these top teams are trying it. It's because it is a viable tactic. But they've obviously said to themselves after every game, okay, this didn't quite work. So what is not working about it? What can we change? What can we uh, really do to make it uh, that one step better and make it into a brilliant tactic? That is a real question here. I think Lemming Chain will have something special up their sleeves. I'm especially interested in that hill push because that's been phased out. It might be back. Yeah, most certainly. And uh, looking over towards the NA side, for example, you know they still run with that. And it'd be interesting to see if the EU side still favour it as well, if it's changed during a little bit of the downtime in the last end of the season, as you mentioned. So I think the tank picks are kind of coming to an end here. And I, I, I don't think we can read too much into it. It's Himmelsdorf. There's very rarely anything new coming out. Yeah, it, it's pretty magical when a team does do something uh, very, very different. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, this, this is going to be a pretty, a pretty interesting game. Uh, obviously, these two have, have a set of brilliant heavy tank players. Um, but this is where Evil Panda Squad can get themselves back into the game. They have some of the best Tier 1 players. I reckon about 40% of games are won by the Tier 1 uh, on, on Himmelsdorf. It's, I, in my opinion, the most important tank. It's the tank I played on Himmelsdorf as I was an artillery player. So <laughs> I know, scumbag, right? But yeah. it, it's, it's so important. Um, we see it time and time again. And, and we do stress it a lot. Why is the Tier 1 important? Because... On Himmelsdorf, you need to commit all your forces into one location. Once you've committed all your heavy tanks there, the other team can just cap. Because you can't send your heavy tank back, tanks back, or even one, because you're going to end up losing the firefight. And if you lose a firefight, then you could potentially lose a game. So there's all these things going through the team captain's mind. Obviously, the training is going to come down uh, a lot to it here as well. But... It's, it's, it's a hard one to call. I'm going to give it Evil, evil Panda Squad. You're going to go for Lemming Train, I guess? Uh, see, I, I would like to actually go for Evil Panda Squad here, to be fair. They are pretty damn good on this one. I like the way they played it in the last season. 
But looking at Lemon Tree in the first game, they took the initiative, they took the advantage, and they started to build off the back of it. So guys, I do believe that video is lined up. So if you did miss the voice of Joe Miller coming through to you, you're going to get it again. And this time, it's going to be for Himmelsdorf. Himmelsdorf is a city maps of city maps. It's a small one being 600 by 600 meters. There are three routes of attack, the hill, the banana, and the train side. The middle area is relatively easy to push, however, can end up in disaster as you can be flanked from every side. The road, often called banana, allows for direct head-on assaults, but requires a lot of resources. Both the railroad area and the road next to it are good routes of attack being very open and straight. However, for those very same reasons, you can be easily caught out and taken down. The map features many densely housed areas, which provides good places for engagements and routes of attack. Teams must be aware of the various routes their opponents can take through the map, as well as the hold-down positions enemies can take throughout the entire map. The trick with Himmelsdorf is to catch an enemy tank unsupported by his teammates and then use that advantage to collapse on the entire enemy team. So, welcome to Himmelsdorf in the south in blue. It's going to be Evil Panda Squad. And in the north in yellow, no surprise, it's Lemming Train. Now, the first map did go in favor to Lemming Train, so now they've got the advantage here. But it can all turn around. What are these guys getting up to so far? So, I was talking about that hill a little bit before. Uh, and it does indeed looks like they are going to be testing the hill up. Sky Skytrip is going very aggressive. He's trying to get himself into that corner on the right. That's for the 50 meter proxy rule. But back to the hill. Uh, Zenith is heading up there. Uh, and also New Multi Show. Both the 5100s obviously being the fastest tank heading towards that location. Interestingly enough, no tier one. So anything they do. I was about to ask you yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So no tier one up there means that uh, Evil Panda Squad just won that engagement. And also the fact that they're actually putting three tanks up there. Uh, so they're just going to go for that engagement. They're going to hope that they have more tanks up there le than Lemming Train. And obviously more tanks means uh, more firepower, more HP, and ultimately uh, a win out. But there's the first spot coming out there. Materius there. And also getting the first shell. Lucas CSD avoiding it on there. So first bit of damage in favor of Evil Fana Squad, but not so much you know, at the beginning of Himmelsdorf. It's just those forwards and back replies in terms of the spotting. And Sky Spirit does uh, spot out the T1. And also a couple of shells in damage. You know, we see quite often the IS3 loading HE just to get the shots out through the hull down positions. Uh, you know, only, if it, only if it does 50 HP or 100 HP, these are ha uh, what games have decided on. It almost always comes down to small amounts of HP. Um, and that's how close these two teams are, but even more tanks onto the hill. Yeah, it seems like Evil Panda Squad are kind of liking this one right now, so very curious if they actually commit here, because we are seeing a bit of a push forming from Lemon Train, or at least kind of a congregation down that three line. They're kind of considering it. That tier one is pushed up quite drastically from Lemon Train, right towards the foot of the castle almost. And you can see Zenith, they're pushed up. He's to be snip laying in wait, so... You won't be able to really take anyone down, but you know, you, you can at least get the spot down. That's the all important factor. Now, this late push coming out from Evil Panda Squad here is to kind of, you know, throw off the timing almost in the mind of the opposition. Yeah, it, I mean, it is, it is a map about timing. Um, what it also could be is about the D line. Um, you know, getting the shots down there, we've seen uh, a lot of teams fall victim to that. You put a tank up there, you, you 51 is best because it can just continue firing. Uh, and then you take out whichever whichever tanks the D-line, but you get spotted out of that snip spawning out Eclipse, and I believe the IS-3 behind him, so he has to get out of there, but that's a great a bit of information from Lemon Train. You can see the reaction almost immediately up the 2-3 line. Yeah, this is the counter push coming out. If you do an all-in like this, Evil Pan Squad could be punished because it has given almost free reign for Lemon Train to edge forward. They just need to kind of be careful of the D-line, as you mentioned, and that G section, and hope the gun depression of that 5100 doesn't come into effect. It's fairly minimal compared to some, but still, it could do a little bit better than the IS-3s. But Materius comes into trouble, gets two shells back to back. He's now have to back away. 761 HP left towards him. No easy route here for Lemon Train. They thought they'd have a bit of a touch, but they're now missing two players as they push forward. Sky Spirit will get the spawn to Alien, Ponomako and Butcher, I can imagine. But there's the reply, quickly shining him down, but there's only one defensive tank really laying away for Evil Panda Squad. This could mean real trouble very soon for these guys. It's those two, uh, two tanks going onto the cap that's really going to be the most annoying thing for them. But that was interesting because Lemming Train, they didn't push immediately, but they pushed late enough so they can get those two tanks in the cap. Potomako taking down uh, the Tier 1 there. Both Tier 1s now for Evil Panda Squad. This is trouble. 
Yeah, this is, and you've got to keep your eyes on that eight line right now. Alien's been watching the cross for a very good reason, but he's being punished. Three tanks moving in. 30 seconds for that cap. Luke now trying to make his way forward. You've got to have to keep your eyes on every single point. They're trying to be so careful here, so meticulous, but at the present second, Evil Panda Squad are in trouble. They're pushing forward, but there's a firing line waiting of the Lemming train. But there we go. First kind of, you know, good exchange go down. Ace finds Carmen, but already Eclipse is in trouble. He's going to have to be careful. Zenef's low. Everything is coming down to these seconds here. 30 seconds left. Luke picking up Alien. Big tank now being taken down. 20 seconds left on the cap. Being reset. Butcher, the best player for Lemming Train, does some fantastic damage onto Ace, but he does escape. 25 seconds here. This is going right down to the wire. Look at the HP of Evil Panda Squad. They're just about staying alive. Finally, the big boys show up. New Mulcher rolling in. 4 HP. Ace comes in as well. These guys are looking for real trouble. Materia's finding new Eclipse. And here we go. Let me try the back here now. An evil Panda Squad. They're turning it around. My god, this came right down to the wire. And now Polo Mako is in serious trouble. Nears Pizzoni is nowhere to be found. There's two tanks dealing with him. Hell, even Snip is trying to help. But to no avail. New Mosho just waiting for that reload. But it's too late. Polo Mako picks him up. Fantastic play. And he's kept hope alive for a couple more seconds. It's Zenef. And Luke up against Polo Mako and his Pizzoni, but look at the HP once again of Evil Panda Squad. 100 and 146. It's minimal. Zenith has three shells left in that autoloader, and Polo Mako's in about half a oh! no, Does get My taken God. down. Fantastic shot there. Nia Pizzoni is only left to deal with Lucas ESD. And it looks like another win for a Lemming Train. What a fantastic game. Let's see if Lucas can pull off something magical here. I think the resounding answer is no. Lemming Train pulling it back from the brink in the second map of Himmelsdorf. And what a fantastic second game there. So much pressure put onto the likes of New Multi Show and everyone like that. But in the end, Paolo Mako and Nia Pizzoni being those key players for Lemming Train. Nia Pizzoni, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I've got a funny feeling I'm going to be saying his name a lot more today because... <laughs> He's turned up for this. It's just amazing. It's hard to do a lot of damage in a 5100 on Himmel's Door, but it's, it's ultra hard to do it in an IS3. 1.8k for him. Potomac taking the uh, crown there with 2,000 damage in that 5100. Three frags picked up for him. Star player once again for Evil Panda Squad with similar amount of damage is actually going to be new multi-show in his 5100, closely followed by Lucas Yisti. Um, but, you know, what a fantastic game there. I can only hope that Evil Panda Squad can get themselves together, which they, I felt they almost did on that map. They almost got it back. The problem was was that when New Multi Show came around that corner against the 250-100, he got quite lucky because one was on reload, um, but he didn't quite have the damage, he didn't have the support from the rest of his team to take out the second one. So uh, for Evil Pound Squad, they had that constant pressure from the cap, but also the brilliant position by Lemming Train uh, around that square, square area. And I guess... You know, when they when they pushed into that one one fifty one hundred, they had the they had the three in the background materials, especially uh, you can see up there. Poto oh, Mako. that uh, kills the death ratio. It's, 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 in, it's insane. That's phenomenal. Now that's not just you know kind of generic pub games. This is you know playing throughout the season. This is phenomenal uh, per game. Really high damage coming through. Now I. I you know, I had my doubts about Lemming Train last time. I think it's it's very safe to say they underperformed at the Season 2 Finals. I think they wouldn't be upset with us saying that. I think, you know, even in the videos, they mentioned that their biggest kind of fault was their own. They kind of uh, gave away the games themselves, but this time they certainly mean business. And I can't wait to see what, what else they can bring, because the next map, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be Abbey now. I think some of the best games we saw were with these teams involved. Now, who do you think has got the advantage here? Lemming Train, um, I'm afraid to say it. Um, uh, Evil Panda Squad, they've always been a great uh, great team on, on Himmelsdorf, and you know, it was a pretty decent team on, on Ensk, but uh, you know, this is the best of five. Uh, we do play all five games, but to take the win, you only need to win three in a row. Obviously, that makes sense mathematically. We are losing, using logic here, so uh, I, I think for, for Lemming Train, they have that extra pressure and that excitement that if they do win on Abbey, um, then they're actually going to take the first game against the Evil Panda Squad. And that's double uh, exciting for them because uh, they actually uh, ended up losing to them in the Season 2 final. So all the pressure's on Lemming Train. Evil Panda Squad, on the other hand, perhaps have yeah. a less amount of pressure, but also um, more because if they do end up losing this, they are going to go up towards those lower brackets. So um, obviously to fight either Dinova or Kazaku, which will be our next game today.
Yeah, and if uh, the next game is anything like this one, we are in for an absolute treat. The first map, very tentative, very slow, very cautious, both testing the water. They play it the second time. Phenomenal aggression coming out from uh, Lemming Train. The third map that's coming up, I only, God knows what we're going to see, because Himmelsdorf was just an absolute treat. So uh, we are seeing the teams kind of getting their choices out towards this map. Uh, is it going to be the normal, you know, T69s, 3090s, 5100 kind of picks coming through here? Yeah, I think that's, that's what it's going to be. Those are the tanks on this map. Uh, 416 would be an option as well, but because you know he has 75 uh, traverse either way, um, he, he can struggle on, on such a complicated and, a, and interesting map where you're not fighting along straight lines anymore. So yeah, I think the T69, that is the basic, that's the foundation for the middle area, uh, obviously where you have to be hull down. You've got the AMX1390 for that just speed and penetrative ability. Uh, and last but not least, this is a 5100 perhaps more for, for backup, but also, yep. you know, just that forward charging tank when it comes to, or if, if these two teams decide to, uh, head over towards that uh, left side, that mountain side, where we quite often just see uh, a massive brawl going down. The winner, usually just the one with the more basic tank skills, um, as I say, you know, just that ability to hit shots and to also bounce shots and absorb shots throughout your whole team, spread the damage out, spread the load, uh, and you'll find yourself a lot more successful. Yeah, indeed. And I'm, I'm trying to think of the previous results on this map. You know, when I think of teams that are strong on Abbey, you know, I, I think to maybe your Virtus Pros, which is hard to deny they're strong on any map. But, you know, your Kasna Cruz, those guys are always very innovative on this one. Mm. Now, I'm trying to think of what sort of games really stand out to me between these two on this map. And I do vaguely remember Lemming Train being extraordinarily strong and Evil Spanda Squad having their moments. New Mold Show being key on here um, in previous games. But whether or not they can turn up today is a completely different thing. But you know, at the moment, in the last map, we saw New Mold Show doing pretty damn well. He's a star player. He's done, he's done well every single time. Um, but last time Evil Spanda Squad played this, they actually ended up going through uh, the, the lowest section of the map. Um, and headed down across uh, from the north. So uh, they have those options. I personally wouldn't go for such an option. I think it's, it's a little bit risky, but you can see uh, both teams finalizing their lineups yep. for Evil Panel Squad. And they seem to be going for those uh, three T69 AMX 1390 um, and uh, Lemming Train. Um, pretty much going for the same thing. They got the double, AM, uh, double T69, double AMX 1390, but instead of the extra T69, they got the 5100. Curious pick there, kind of wondering how that's going to really come into effect. Now, Abbey can be played so many different ways. You know, it's, it's not just you know, very much a Himmelsdorf style, which we saw some kind of adaption in the last game, so it makes me sound like I'm completely wrong. But Abbey is a very unique game, isn't it? So I can't wait to see how these guys really focus out, decide how they want to play, because it comes down to that personality. So guys, let's get ready for Abbey. Welcome to Abbey, a hard but gratifying map to master. Abbey is 1000 by 1000 meters and has three main routes of attack. The left mountainous area, through the Abbey in the middle, or in the trench to the right. The housed Abbey area in the middle, the winding trench road and the treacherous mountainous area. The Abbey area can be moved upon on a central road Often the two teams battle it out for the higher ground. The mountainous area often sees intense action as it overlooks the abbey and provides key access to the enemy's base. The base area can also be accessed via the trench and is a common route of attack. It is essential to defend your base. Teams must pay close attention to their tank setups and in particular how they utilize them to greatest effects on what is a very complicated map. are really leading the way here. Now, Evil Panzer Squad, they've got to have to do something this time. And what sort of formation are they using straight away? I'm kind of surprised they're heading over towards the, uh, the mountainside. Just judging by their lineup, uh, they haven't got quite as much firepower or HP as, as a Lemming Train, uh, not having that AMX 5100. Uh, but you can see that kind of ingenious play coming up there from Zenith. He's, he's got himself into a good position. You can hide, you can get the shots out. Um, I think that's what Evil Panda Squad's plan here is sitting up in that C, B, A line, get the tanks hull down, get themselves into a good uh, fortified position, turtle up a little bit, and then expect a Lemming Train to push on because that's what Lemming Train does on this map. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm curious to see if Evil Panda Squad kind of keep that in mind now because they seem to be slowing down around that CD line, getting set up as you mentioned they would be. And uh, I, I want to see if they keep pushing because it does seem as though they're edging further forward here. Materius Alien, his Pizzorni all laying in wait. This could be over very quickly if mistakes are made by Evil Panda Squad. In the next couple of choices they make, Luke, Ace and Co all edging forward, but they have now seen the eyes of the enemy. Materius not too far away. Reloads, they're available. Whether or not they take those shots just yet is very much up to them. So Ace and Eclipse just weighing this one out. Seeing where the viability lies. Now let's keep our eyes on Zenith as well. You've got to keep your eyes on this man. If he goes on a flank, he can cause real trouble down that one line. Already Alien takes a bit of a beating from Eclipse there. Alien now backs away. But you can see that slowly but surely Evil Pan Squad winning a little bit of the battle here, but it's certainly not the war. Well, it's, it's a couple of shots apiece. Eclipse now down to 1-1-4. One, one, Alien's down to 855. Obviously at 1390 has less, less HP. More shots coming out there from Nia Pazorni. For Evil Panda Squad, they've got to be careful of not letting Potomako, the star player from the previous game, uh, in, into this. Because if he does, he gets himself into a good position. He's going to be able to do some serious damage. Obviously, 1.8k damage from the SA-47. If he does land all six shells at 300 average. Butcher receiving one as well, so he's down to 868. So Evil Panda Squad seem to be in the driving seat, but it's not enough damage to really say, okay, these guys are winning, these guys are losing. Um, but I would expect Lemmy Train to retreat, get themselves up into H2 area, uh, and then for once they're there, make sure that Evil Panda Squad are not pushing on, and then send those AMX 1390s around, come from the behind, come from the flank, uh, or maybe even just take out those two T1s, maybe even go for a cap like they have in the last two maps. Yeah, maybe a little bit more uh, confident play, or maybe overzealous play, should I say, from Lemming Train coming out, not reversing, not kind of setting up in that slightly drawn back position, as you mentioned. That could cause troubles if they're maybe outstaying their welcome. We are seeing a little bit of a change coming through for the Evil Pan Squad side. They are sending that 1390 back slightly. A couple of shells coming out, and this new Molcho just tucked into the corner as well. He's just waiting to see if anyone goes on that flank around the side. Not fancying that just yet. CNF edging through, Butcher does get another shell coming out there. Just finding his position perfectly. It's just very tentative right now. But, uh, very loud tanks. Very loud tanks. The old show just, you know, really revving the engine apparently. Uh, <laughs> but we are just going to wait to see who actually really engages here. Six minutes and 22 seconds left on this one. No one wants to make that mistake, no one makes the first move because there's so much on the line now. Exactly. That's that's. It's just really where that whole 22 match days actually comes, uh, and uh, really decides what you do. This is the build-up. The 22 match days are just about getting here. Making that final step is the most important map, but, uh, most important part. Obviously, 50,000 euros going to first place, uh, followed by 21,000, 15,000, 8,000, and the last two picking up 3,000 euros apiece. And obviously, you got the pride part of it. Um, joining the likes of uh, Team Dignitas, Invertus Pro as season winners. Um, and I'm hoping it's going to be a Polish team. We are in Poland. Uh, I remember in Iron Katowice when uh, Evil Panda Squad took it against OM on Prokhorovka. Uh, how much the fan lo fans loved it and how much we loved it and how much the team loved it. Um, it was uh, an absolute fantastic moment and, and I can't wait to see if that happens again. But so far Lemming Train are on course through that 2-0 up against Evil Panda Squad. Now almost five minutes into this game on Abbey, we are on our third map. Um, and uh, Zenith, though, and, and Evil Panda Squad definitely seem to be in the driving seat. They've sent a couple of tanks round. T1 starting to edge themselves into position. But for Lemming Train, at least, they're quite happy to turtle down, sit up, and just wait for the engagement. Yeah, and it's uh, very tentative stuff so far. Uh, Zenith still taking his time. They're all just kind of being very you know, defensive, and you can kind of tell why from Evil Panda Squad. They pretty much have the game um, teetering on the edge here. You know, if uh, Lemming Train pick up another map, it's almost it's pretty much his game over. It's 3-0. So Lemming Train can do what they want almost with this one, but they're still being very careful because you can't really throw games at this level because it wouldn't take much for Evil Panda Squad to turn this one around. We know they're strong on minds and steps, so you do not want to give them that advantage. Ace, however, is moving back slightly, and Eclipse, they're kind of readjusting, trying to find their way through, trying to find the best, you know, viable option. Yeah, they certainly are. But, you know, so far, Lemming Train have pushed every single time, every single map they've pushed forwards. And I think the kind of thing that's going through Evil Panda Squad mind right now is saying, you guys have won two maps, push on to us and let's see what happens. But 
In my opinion, it's not how that works. It's not how World of Tanks works. You need to be taking that initiative. Lemming Train have just proved that, as I said, by taking the first two maps. Um, and Evil Panic Squad just need to make that step. I always say a team that plays like Odin Mortis on this map is a team that will win. Those guys, uh, they struggle in Hibbensdorf in the end square. Everything's very linear. But on a map like Abbey, where everything's just incredibly difficult to play and there's so many options, they're just unbelievable. You know, they beat the team digging tasks like they're nothing. They beat Vertus Pro like you're nothing. They just swipe everyone out of the way. And people need to be watching how they do it, being very dynamic, sending tanks into the cap, sending tanks in the middle. Um, and, th and they've gone through a learning experience. They weren't good on Abbey in Season 1. It was only in Season 3 where they actually learned and they, uh, and they got themselves so many wins. Uh, but it's tentative stuff. Uh, Evil Panda Squad have sp spread out a little bit. Sky Spirit's sitting up in that bush. Um, two bushes, actually, probably about 50% camo in this T1. Um, obviously, that tank has a pretty good camo value as it is. And on spot coming out there onto Nia Pazzoni in his T69. Uh, a couple of shots, actually. I believe that was from uh, Nia Pazzoni indeed. So he's going to be reloading on that T69. So about, I would say, 10 seconds until he's reloaded there. Uh, but 2 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. Do you think anyone's going to push? Right now, I think Lemming Trainer tempted because they've got, you know, they've got the advantage so far. There's, you know, at the moment, there's nothing saying that they would lose this, really. You know, they've got two maps. Statistically, they're doing better than the opposition. Quite, you know, easy, <laughs> easy thing to keep in well mind. Well done, Yeah, I know, right? Maths is hard. But, you know, it's, it's down to Evil Pants to start really kicking things up. And I think they might just be starting to adjust a little bit, maybe considering the idea of making a push. Ace is edging forward now. He's actually been fairly unspotted by opposition. Alien, however, has caught him one shell coming through and make it two. Doesn't get the full damage, but just about backs away. And to what end? Did they really get much of a reply through? You know, it, okay, they may be repositioned, but maybe Evil Pants Squad are getting edgy themselves. They're looking like they want to start making the move, maybe start dominating the pace, like we saw Lemming Train doing on the last two maps that they picked up. But can they really get that execution? They have to get that execution. I think immediately just push forwards from when uh, Materia's got those two shots in the T69. Then that's when they should have pushed forwards because he was on reload uh, after he thought, okay, Evil Panda Squad are not pushing. So that's one tank out of the equation. Nia Pizzoni now on reload in his T69. So obviously some coordination going on there in terms of reloads. Okay, Poto Mako might be able to make up for that in his 5100. That's, but that's why you take him down first. Focus down that massive box of a tank and then move on to uh, Elian and Butcher in, in the MX-1390s to make sure that they can't actually run away and possibly draw the game out. But now 1 minute and 15 seconds left near Pazorni's come off reload. Um, both teams pretty similar in terms of HP. Ace has taken one, Eclipse has taken one, but so has Butcher and Elian. Yeah, and I, I don't think there's been any real advantage given to the extent the other team would have wanted, for example. So there's no like easy victory route. There's no easy viable way unless maybe lemming train throw caution to the wind and just go all in which i highly doubt they're gonna do not when there's this much money riding on these games they have got a glimpse of ace there but not enough to really take a shot just yet alien materis and his pizzoni both staring him down keep your eye on the timer that's the most important thing at the moment that's the biggest enemy of these teams if they make one mistake here if they make one error and they give away the position they give away enough for the opponent to be able to make a move in those last couple of seconds and get the tier point advantage they're in trouble but it looks like materius is getting a little bit aggressive he's kind of you know testing things out being confident pushing up in that t69 looking down still nothing to be found i think this is gonna be a draw out but do you think we're going to see the adaption on the second time around? I certainly hope so. Both teams now have a good idea what the other team is doing. I'm surprised we didn't see an adaption this time around because it was so obvious what they're doing. They're both yeah. sitting there looking at each other. Why didn't, for instance, Evil Panda Squad, who have the faster lineup uh, with the, the extra T69, why didn't they head up around, try something different, maybe go for a cap? Uh, but it will be a draw on our third map. Abby still 2-0 to Lemming Train. Yep. Uh, no real advantage there. Elian did hit the two shots for, for Lemming Train. They did the most damage, 501 uh, Eclipse for, for Evil Panda Squad. But as again, you know, I, I would have liked to see some adaption. I would have liked to see, uh, I would like to see Evil Panda Squad try something new. Um, perhaps even take one less T69, one more AMX 1390. That gives you more options. It gives you more versatility more speed. It's a little bit more risky because it's not such a reliable tank to play because, um, you know, the T69, as long as there's not an I3 or a 110 in, in the opposition's lineup, and you can pretty much penetrate your, your, your T69, you can pretty much penetrate a 5100, you can penetrate a 416, an AMX 1390, pretty much anything you care to mention. 
Now, we saw how those two, uh, two teams played that map out, right? They all went to kind of the left side of the map or the right side if you're starting from the north, and they kind of just steady each other down. Now, what adaption can be kind of made from this game? Do you think we'll see maybe one team doing the same, the other going for the Abbey presence? Or do you think they might use the road on the right? We very rarely see that used for a full team push. But what sort of changes are we going to see coming from this one? I'm hoping for the Abbey push. Uh, I really am. I think that's the, the best idea. Um, I think Evil Panel Squad, if they do decide to go for the three, th three T69s, get the Abbey presence, move up into the actual Abbey area. Uh, that means you can drop down towards the trench side, you can drop down um, up into the middle, you can just drive yep. uh, where you actually came from. So you have loads of options. Obviously the problem comes on uh, when you have tanks up in, uh, up in where we were before on, on the mountainside, they can shoot up across. But if you have like a T1 proxy spotting or you have another tank there, um, you, you can actually do some serious damage. So these are the kind of options they have, um, but we're just going to be uh, waiting a little bit as Carmen has got the bladder of a three-year-old. He's gone to the toilet for a little bit uh, before we get into our <laughs> next battle, which will be on the same map, Abbey. Same starting positions. I imagine the same tanks. They do have the option of changing it, um, but I don't think they will. All right. So while we're waiting for Carmen to make his way back to us, I want you guys at home who are watching to give me your predictions on this map. Ignore the overall scoreline for now. It's it, okay, keep it in mind maybe, but don't, don't tweet me that. I want you to tweet at me and Ollie to kind of let us know what you think this map's gonna go like. So if you do wanna tweet at us, do tweet at laughterwot, at they call me pansy, and let us know who's gonna walk away with the victory on this map. Is it gonna be Lemming Train, the team who've got two maps now in the bag? Is it gonna be the Evil Panda Squad, the team that absolutely trashed them the last time they properly met during an event like this, let's say, during the season two offline finals? Carmen's returning to us now, so do not fear. You've got a couple more seconds to get your tweets through to us. I wanna see what the community's thinking here because I'm finding it very hard to kind of call the difference because I feel so Evil Panda Squad are very passive at the moment. It's very hard to kind of read their strengths that they used to kind of have into this game so far. If they came out and maybe played like they used to, they, they could be real trouble, but the way they're going, I don't see that really happening. They have, they have the ability. That's what scares me. You know, yeah. they, they have that real player skill and the experience that goes with it. So um, I'm not sure why they, they're choosing to sit back a little bit and not be so, so aggressive. Lemming Train have been aggressive on two maps now, so they're kind of like, you know, come at us instead of us coming at you all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they, they have that option. Whether they really take it, that is another question. Obviously, Abbey is not the easiest map to play in the world. Um, and uh, from the north, we did see that cheesy push a lot, but it, it's not so reliable as it used to be. Uh, it's a little bit harder to play since teams know exactly how to counter it, especially if they do head up towards the uh, mountainside like we do see quite often. But as I said, it's, I think it's going to come down to the Abbey push. If Evil Panda Squad don't adapt, Lemming Train certainly are. And we know when Lemming Train adapts, they, they are like they a train. Win. You can't stop them. <laughs> Yeah, wow, battling. they're like a train, lemming train. Wow. wow. Buns are coming out already. It's good stuff. See, I thought I'd last at least the first game before you'd kind of drop to that level, but apparently not. But you can see the guys on your screen right now just having to chat through things, you know, discussing the possible options going forward. What's the best way to kind of uh, challenge out the opponent? Just uh, having a quick break, quick refresher. Hopefully they can kind of get things going nice and quickly. I think it's just a matter of talking things through because obviously with the money on the line, the next two games or the next few games coming up, being absolutely vital. We need to make sure you know, that they are absolutely on point. And you know, you, you're a player yourself at one point. The mentality of being in the right, uh, you know, in the right mind frame is so vital for these guys. So you know, they've got to be able to get themselves prepared and uh, make sure everything's working, everything's connected. Because the first game of the day for these guys, you know, they've just got here. They've been practicing the whole time. Even you know, you saw like of Nova watching demos back, playing maps out. And I can imagine these guys were not too far away from that as well. You know, this is the first time they're properly set up, and it's all about making sure everything is correct for them. You can see the guy on the screen, they're just chatting things through, making sure everything is uh, working. And, uh, well, hopefully we're underway nice and quickly. I think they're uh, pretty much ready to go, um, hopefully. Uh, maybe a little bit of trouble with the Elian, but it should be all good. Um, they are going to be picking the same, map, uh, same tank, same map, so uh, nothing will change. Uh, but, you know, as you were mentioning, this is where everything counts. Um, if you do end up winning today, you don't end up losing any matches. You just go straight through 
and play the second seed, which is uh, Virtus Pro. If you end up losing, you go down to the lower bracket and you go straight through to play uh, uh, Team Dignitas, which obviously had that amazing 15 to three uh, end of the season, while Virtus Pro only had 13 to four. Um, so you don't want to be playing Team Dignitas, certainly not after their WCG win, 3-2 uh, to two against Wusa. You want to be playing the weaker team, which is Virtus Pro, I am sorry to say, despite their, their Season yep. 2 win. And I think, as well, you know, Team Dignitas, after not coming to Season 2, they have those, that fire in their bellies, um, which obviously counts for a lot. Um, it counts for pretty much everything. You want to yep. be having that passion to go forwards. You want to be having that passion to win again. Yeah, and uh, one thing I want to really happen is that an admin might nudge Evil Panda Squad to sit down and actually play the games now because everyone else seems to be ready and we're still seeming to be waiting here. So hopefully all the problems are resolved and we can kind of find out what the delay is. That'd be kind of cool because obviously we are still midway through a game. It's not the end of it just yet. We are going to be replaying Abby as it was drawn out. No team really being able to edge ahead there. No team finding the best viable option. And uh, I believe they are just taking their seats now. Thank God for that. It stops me talking too much. Because no one really likes to hear us. You know, we just want tank sounds constantly. Uh, why? Well, I don't know. I, we like to hear our own voices. Yes, but we do. But other people don't like to hear our voices. So no. I, I guess that's a good point. Um, but yeah, uh, while we're waiting, we can talk about uh, some roster changes that have come in um, as well. Uh, uh, we've got Lucas Easty. He's coming for Lucky Cracky. That's for Evil Panda Squad. And we've got Lemming Trains. Uh, he's got he's gone from uh, Lucky Cracky as well. He's a caravan. So those those two is, is very interesting. Two guys from Lucky Cracky. Obviously another Polish team heading into these two teams. Obviously making a big difference because they are proving to be pretty good. Although caravan hasn't come in for for, for Lemming Train. That's because Materius is here now, but he's still in the team. So I believe we're re-picking tanks, actually. The teams want to change something up. Uh, clearly staring each other down for a solid 10 minutes wasn't exactly how they want to play it out the next time through. So uh, what sort of choices do you think they might go for to switch it up, considering what the original lineups were? Well, as I said, I think AMX 3090 extra for, for you, Evil Panda you Squad. It actually. Yeah, I think that sense. might be a good idea. It allows them to be a little bit faster, a little bit more versatile. Um, combine that with the double T69, you have yourself a good, solid team, both in the middle area, the Abbey, where you need to hold down tank, but also uh, towards the trench side. Uh, and, you, you know, you can never really shy away from the AMX 3090. It's got a very high skill cap because it is so fast. Um, it's aim time down, aim, aim down, down time is less than, than preferable, um, especially against, against the T69. But it, it's, it's an ex extremely good tank. Once you do, uh, once you do nail it, and you, you do have it under your finger, but it, as I said, very hard to play. Some teams shy away from it. I think Evil Panda Squad might be one of those teams, um, but if they don't, they might find themselves rewarded. Well, we'll find out, and uh, maybe the Brave will adapt. Oh, very interesting choice coming through. Did they mean that? Ah, there's Alien over T32 there. Didn't well, they that, that could, last time around, that that's could. a very different option. It certainly could work, and we haven't seen it for a, for a very long time. Um, it's a tank that has a lot of armor, uh, a lot of HP, a wow. lot of turret armor, more more, more to the point. Uh, the T5E1, uh, I'm not a massive fan of. Uh, it doesn't do that much damage. 245 penetration is not great, although against uh, a T69, which is the highest uh, armor tank there on the other team, it, it can pretty much penetrate every shot, but it might bounce. Uh, but also... Uh, yeah, the 5100 is going to be staying for uh, Lemming Train. Um, so pretty much everything's the same apart from that T32. Very interesting switch up there. I'm kind of curious why they went for that. Like, don't get me wrong, it has its strengths. Quite literally, it's, it's a hell of a strong tank, but curious, curious stuff. I'm very, you know, I'm interested where they position it for one, because it's not something we commonly see here. It's certainly not something that's, you know, in the kind of, you know, 1390 T69 sort of um, percentage of picks in this. So interesting to see how that's going to be played. Very curious to see how Lemming Train now plays this one through. Clearly those team chats um, you know, provided some sort of insight. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm baffled as to why, because you know, if anyone wanted the change, you know, do you think it should have been Lemming Train or should have been Evil Panda Squad? I think, I think it should have been Evil Panda Squad. Uh, I think the MX-1390 would have been a good pick. Obviously Lemming Train with that T32 are going to be going over towards the mountain side, and that's why they've picked it because they know it will out hull down every single other tank. You know, a T69 seems like nothing, although it's a great hull down tank compared to a T32. 
Uh, it's such such a brilliant tank in that situation. 298 millimeters of, uh, of mantlet armor. You can't really penetrate with anything unless you uh, ha start heading up to tier 10, and then you're still gonna get, still gonna get absorbed as as a shot. So um, tier 32, brilliant uh, pick from Lemon Train. I would be interested to see uh, how how they can get that T32 on the mountainside because it is a very slow tank. Uh, even more so on, on soft ground. Obviously, grass is soft for uh, a tank that is plus 40, 50 tons. Um, so if Evil Panda Squad can position themselves and get themselves further into the game, be more aggressive, um, then they can actually use that T32 to their advantage. If they do that is another question. Yeah, and I think it's going to be in the hands of Polo Mako, so it's all keeping your eyes on that player right there. Very talented man. So we are just waiting for the game to tick itself down. We're going back into Abbey. And in the south, in yellow, once again, it's going to be Lemming Train. And in the north, it's going to be Evil Panda Squad. So are we seeing the same start to your eyes so far? It does look very similar. Uh, well, actually, Evil Panda Squad just heading down the middle. Uh, it does look like they're going over towards the mountainside, but uh, this time just charging down into the middle area. They have the same spawns, uh, so it does look like they want to, uh, they want to engage there. So that's the adapt uh, adaption coming out because of the pick from Lemming Train with that T32. But Lemming Train also heading out the middle of Materias, uh, looking, uh, peeking over that little uh, crest there. But that's what I was saying. You know, the ad adaption from going to the mountainside, the next log log logical step is heading over towards the Abbey side. Maybe, as you can see from, from Lemming Train, sending a couple of tanks up the trench side. Uh, but you can see from the evil Panda Squad position of that T32, it's a very hard position to get into the game. Uh, it'll take like... 30 seconds, maybe a minute to drive into the middle. So it just has to provide that backup in terms of firepower, but not the most accurate gun to do so. So he, he could he could really struggle. ZNF so trying to get some spots out with that AMX 1390. Uh, obviously brilliant view, view range on that tank. Also very quick to get out of there. As you can see, he can just prance up around Abbey and, and make sure um, that he doesn't get any unnecessary damage. More T1 starting to push up for the side of Lemming Train, get themselves further and further into that trench side. Materi so. He takes the first bit of damage there, uh, down to one, 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 zero. Um, so he has to make sure that he doesn't peek over there again because he didn't spot any tanks when he did take the damage. Yeah, so already a nice start for Evil Panda Squad. Going well for them, you can see Carmen just kind of uh, edging forward, trying to get into a better position, get those spots through. Snip going down that eight line. He will be met by the opposition quite soon if he's not careful. Just down the end of this road pretty much there will be a tank waiting, but... He can just play it smart, play it carefully. He's just kind of clearing his way through. It's all about getting the information, as you mentioned. Another tank being spotted out as well. That will mean that, uh, I believe that's Sky Spirit going down. That'd be Alien picking that one up. So it might have given away the game a touch. So he has found Snip, so that goes back and forth. Good bit of damage between them. And uh, he's just hoping that Alien doesn't pop around that corner. So the game kind of slowly being worked out here. Both teams picking up advantages and disadvantages. You know, we saw the early damage going to... Um, or going against Lemming Train. Evil Pan Squad had the advantage there, but then we see the Tier 1's kind of been taken down. It's kind of going back and forth at the moment. It's very similar to the first game as well, because you remember back then, Evil Pan Squad had got the uh, initial shots off as well. Um, so, once again, Lemming Train just testing the waters, getting punished a little bit, but not critically so. And now heading over towards that left side with most of their tanks, um, sending the T-32 in the AMX-5100 there, and uh, hopefully get themselves into a good position. I think that's a good thing because um, they do have the right set of tanks to push up the mountainside, uh, while East Evil Panda Squad um, do have the right tanks to uh, really have that m middle area. And, and it, was, it, was, it showed. Lemming Train took some damage. Evil Panda Squad didn't, although they did lose Sky Spirit. Um, so they definitely had the better middle position tanks. Um, but Lemming Train need to be a little bit careful because they can get uh, caught on the rotate. Um, but what they're probably looking for is to spot out the middle position, get them, their tanks into those bushes uh, which overlook the abbey, and get some side shots on. Yeah, and you know, uh, the likes of the T69 is nowhere near going to struggle with the gun depression you know, over towards that area. Maybe it's you know, almost on the same level, but you know, it's just such a beautiful position. And, well, the player standing in their way from a free reign will be Ace for now, who is still kind of playing quite defensively. He's not gone too aggressive. He's playing quite passively there. But surely he's going to be making calls very soon when he starts seeing those shots fly. Eclipse and Lucasti could be in trouble 
if you know they get caught out in those positions because they're not too far away now. You can see the Lemming Train have got a good presence now down that two line and they're not stopping. They're going to continue pushing quite far forward here. So this could really mean trouble for the likes of Ace for the rest of the Evil Panther Squad if they don't start expecting this. Surely they haven't seen players. Ace is now having to back away. He's been making a call. At least Poto Mako is there. And that's not going to be too much of a surprise here, but you're already seeing the big adaptions coming out from Evil Pan Squad. They need to make a move and make it pretty darn fast. They've got to get out of those positions that are pretty much open from that two line. And let's see if they can kind of control the damage that co could possibly be dealt by Lemming Train. At the moment, Lemming Train are kind of dragging out Evil Pan Squad. And you can see they got uh, E2, they got a few tanks there, but what uh, Potomako did then, he, he actually made Zenith join New Multi Show in preparation for a cat push. That leaves those two T69s in the middle on their own, and Ace now joining them. So any move Lemming Train do, they can catch a tank completely unsupported, but they're not making that move. They don't have any line of sight, so um, they won't catch uh, Evil Panda Squad, who are uh, actually going for kind of a turtle move, I think, maybe even mm. heading up the trench. So knowing that uh, Lemming Train are so heavily present wow. over towards the mountainside, push up the, the trench side with, with their definitely faster lineup, go for a capping move, and then just play it out from there. Obviously, it's quite hard to cap, but you do have uh, like a depression where you can put the AMX 3090 being a very low profile tank in, and you can't shoot it from the mountainside. You actually need to get stuck in and actually kill it to take it down and stop the cap. Yeah, and Aliens go walkabouts now. He's not happy just sitting back. He knows there's something going on. They haven't seen any return fire. They haven't got any spots out towards that central abbey position with Carmen pushed up into it. So he knows they're going to be somewhere either by their own flag or maybe to that northeast side, depending on where they fancy. But very unique play from Evil Panda Squad here. This is not what we normally see. He doesn't really get to this point. And as you said about that defilade, you know, they're using it quite well. They're putting their tanks down their Eclipse, Luke and Ace, all just sitting back, trying to peer over there. Nice, you know, use of the turrets and just kind of eyeing it up in case there was that cap push that you mentioned. Nothing really coming of that at the moment. Very tentative from both sides once again. Different starts completely, but it's kind of kind of molded down into this similar fashion. But different late game here. We still have Sony alive for uh, Evil Pan Squad for the tier one. And we do see two tier ones left alive for Lemming Train. So Carmen and Snip. So maybe got a bit more of a, a fallback plan available to them. But Evil Pan Squad still certainly not out of this. And with ZMF going hunting, they could find possibly Carmen here. It's probably what they're looking for. They're looking for just a, a way into this game. Uh, being the more aggressive team, which is, which is great to see. Uh, three minutes and 30 seconds left to, to do whatever they've got to do to, to win here. And they desperately need a win. As I said, this is a best of five, but you know, honestly, if you win three games, then you do end up taking it. Lemming Train haven't moved since that position, well, since they took that position earlier on. Uh, Evil Panda Squad edging themselves further into the trench zone, hoping maybe looking towards the cap, maybe looking towards taking out a tier one. But the thing is, Lemming Train, they have that central area. They have the Abbey, which not only connects them to God, but it also keeps them connected to the whole map because they have the field of view around. They can spot every tank that pushes around. Um, but Nia Pazorni heading up in th uh, through that water. He's not going to get taken down by water, which would be very embarrassing. I've seen it before. Um, and they're going to get find themselves into uh, the middle area. More and more, putting more tanks there, increasing their presence, uh, which will give them even more advantages I, I was talking about earlier. Um, Evil Panda Squad looked like they were being aggressive, but they kind of backed off a little bit. Um, they've still got those three tanks which are looking towards their cap. Although Lemming Train haven't actually been spotted and they haven't been there for at least two minutes. They weren't even there in the first place, so uh, maybe they need to actually get themselves rolling. Join Zenith for New Multi Show in that AMX 3090 and AMX 5100 and just try a different direction. It does seem as though Evil Panda Squad are almost playing like they're at a loss already. They never seem to want to go for the advantage straight away. And it's always been a matter of uh, Lemming Train leading this game to this point. So. We are seeing Zenef hunting around, looking for a possible pick up here into that central abbey area. Um, no luck there, but you can see the lemon train still edging forward. They're looking for a way to the abbey as well. But with one minute and 53 seconds left, there's not that many options left here. Don't get me wrong, we've seen caps happen faster than that, but you can see on, or at least hear the shells coming through to not much avail right now. A couple of shells not really connecting material, so just gonna get that reload underway. But they're working out where the opposition are. Would they make a risky move with one minute and 33 seconds left? They would make a risky move if they knew where the other team was. Because then you can say, okay, as long as we do this half decent, we can take one. 
tier 8 tank down. Let's say Lemon Train push on to, on, on to uh, those T-69s. They'll be able to take one down. That will give them the nine points they need, or the eight points they need. Nine, including Spy, Sky Spirit there, uh, to take them through to a win. But you need the information to do that. You can't just push arbitrarily into the middle of a map and, and hope there's going to be a tank there. Uh, those T-69s haven't been spotted. Uh, and as, as you said, you know, such a little amount of time to do anything. I think this is going to be another draw. Uh, obviously, the pressure is mounting on these two teams, especially for Evil Panda Squad, who are 2-0 down. Um, and they need to get a win back here. They're not willing to push into, into a very strong-looking Lemmy train who seems to have all the answers to... Uh, their, their defensive uh, positions and uh, seem to be the stronger team today um, as uh, Carmen does go on uh, a walkabout in his T1. Perhaps trying to look for a spot. If he does head up over towards this uh, this crest, he might spot those three T69s, uh, but he doesn't. maybe he doesn't have that view range to do so. No, but uh, they, they kind of have an idea they were here. You saw those shots earlier on coming out from uh, the tanks around that D4 line, but... Carmen just looking for a way through. Ten seconds are left, though, so if anything does happen to either side, it's more of a mistake than uh, a bit of sheer brilliance. You know, seeing a little bit of movement, but still, three seconds left. I believe this game will be going through to a draw. So, Evil Panda Squad not happy with the start again. Neither were Lemming Train. No one got the advantage. And we didn't even see that T32 coming into play, really. It was all very much negated. It was all very much, you know, kind of left alone where it was. So... Interesting game, don't get me wrong. These teams tried a little bit of adaption through that Central Abbey area. They pushed down the left side, bullied the opposition out. You know, Evil Panzer Squad had to adapt all the way back behind their flag. But, you know, it's, it's, it's very tentative, very close. And no team wants to make that mistake. They don't. They really don't. I mean, as we said, everything's on the line here. A mistake would be catastrophic. Uh, but they have to try something to, to win. You know, they need to take the initiative um, but uh, it's a really question of who does take the initiative. I think for, for Lemming Train, um, they definitely have that ability. Evil Panel Squad, as, as you've seen in statistics, they're definitely yep. not the, the most aggressive team in the world. Um, uh, they're quite uh, happy to sit back and, and just repeat the map over and over again until they get a way in, a really obvious gaping way in. Um, but uh, it's going to be quite hard for them to find it on Abbey. Uh, it's, it's such a, a well-preserved map. So this is their best player so far. It's been Butcher. You can see that two KD ratio, probably the best heavy tank player, maybe in the league, arguably. And that guy's been around for so, so long. He's, I remember actually playing against him in, in close beta. Uh, he was a right annoying guy to play against. He was, he was, <laughs> was that very, the word you were originally was, going he, he for? Was, he was very good. He was, he was very good, but a right annoying guy. That's the best I've ever heard you kind of uh, speak of someone. Thank you very much. I'm, no I'm not very good at compliments, so I go, for I go for annoying most of the time. But yeah, uh, Butcher, <laughs> such a great player. Um, I mean, Lauren likes to go for the Butcher jokes and, and puns, but I like to st uh, keep it classy here. Um, but if you just join us, this is the WGL EU Season 3 Grand Finals here in tier here, Poland. We are in our first uh, matchup. It's Evil Panda Squad versus Lemming Train. Lemming Train 2 nil up on our third map which is Abby, two draws in. I think this one might be the one to, uh, to break the deadlock here. Let's hope so, because Evil Planet Squad, they need this win. Oh, and if gotcha. they do break it, I think they might actually get themselves onto a roll. See, there's a couple of people, and we did ask you guys to tweet, and you did, which we do always appreciate. And there was a good couple of people still saying, you know, I still believe Panda can win. And then someone, you know, David comes in and says, roasted Panda coming right up. That's pretty harsh words coming out. These guys, you know, it's, it's, it's very back and forth. A lot of people going for Lemming Train. I think there's still a couple of your Panda Squad fans, you know, around here. Um, you know, it's uh, a couple of people. Uh, Velion, I think, said, I think Evil Panda Squad stand a good chance, but Lemming Train has the higher morale, in my, in my opinion. And the, the way they're playing, I think that's certainly true. He's uh, clearly uh, been listening because, you know, Carmen, very confident. They said, you know, the biggest mistakes we made were our own previously. His name is Carmen, so. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Oliver. This is, this is the kind of stuff you can expect from us, so. Yeah, you, you got you raise a good point. Um, he just needs some morale, his troops, and and keep their keep them going, keep them plugging forwards. Uh, they obviously have that uh, motivation behind them that they are at the moment in the driving seat completely. Uh, but we should be able to get this uh, game underway. I'm not sure if they're going to be changing tanks. I don't think they will be. Uh, so we're just going to load into the map. The 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 positions are going to be the same. The tanks are going to be the same. But the tactics they have to change. Most certainly, uh, you know, Lemming Train bullied 
Evil Panda Squad off that two line earlier on, using that T32 to be the kind of pushing power, almost putting them back into the northeast side, leaving them carrying in a corner pretty much, which wasn't ideal. So let's hope Evil Panda Squad can kind of do something a little bit different here, bring their A game, stop being so defensive and finally kind of get that advantage, get the morale behind them and kind of find their footing here because these guys, they're so talented. They've beaten this team before in the harder situations than this, but they've just been struggling. So coming back into this, it will be Lemon Train one once again in the south, playing the same lines we saw before, and in the north you'll be Evil Panda Squad. This is a very different start. It's a, it's a different start just because of the amount of tanks uh, Evil Panda Squad are sending over towards the uh, trench side. Quite unusual. Trench side was more favoured when artillery was more present in these uh, games. Zenef leading the charge, obviously, in that nimble AMX 3090. Copy suit by New Multi Show and Ace. Uh, but he could be spotted out by those two tier ones, um, but uh, they don't have the greatest view range, and they will be be very easy targets for uh, for the AMX 1390 for Lemming Train. They're doing a pretty similar thing, although they've obviously yeah. got the, well, they got those two those two heavy tanks at the back. That's probably because they want to rotate them over towards the uh, the uh, mountain side a little bit quicker. Still got materials there in the T69 in the middle, and uh, a couple of AMX 1390s now on the rotate back towards the uh, mountain side. Materius now actually heading up into the middle, uh, or maybe towards the left to join its AMX 1390. This could be a little bit of a probing move from Lemming Train. Starting to get itchy fingers, starting to try and get themselves into this game. Good stuff. Yeah, indeed. When you have that advantage as well, you just want to further it at that point. You know, Evil Panda Squad, they're, they're very, very close to each other. They're literally right next to each other. <laughs> Sky Spirit steps away from Carmen. And his teammate, in lovely positioning coming out. He's going to just about make it off of there and uh, stay alive for now. But still, information coming trickling through. Can they kind of find anything else? They know where Carmen is, but will they be able to find the other tanks that are nowhere near far away? Already from the back of this evil panda squad, get themselves slowly but surely towards that Ebby area. There is a couple of tanks waiting for them from Lemming Train, but it's not, certainly not the full force. But let's bear in mind, you know, that trench side doesn't provide as nicer, I think, firing lines as, you know, the two lines for example, so I'd be very interested to see who gets the advantage from this one. Already movement on both teams, Evil Panda Squad retracting away back to their flag. They don't want to overstay the welcome here. They know they don't have the backup of New Mulcho where they were, who's now going to try and find a position he can work with. Pono Mako being spotted. This could be a bit of an interesting or tricky shot, should I say, if any of these guys do go for this, but the information is there now. It's all about finding it out, and now they've got to make their moves on it. Pono Mako being spotted again. These guys are well aware of their opposition. Who's going to get in the better position? Who do you think will get the advantage? Well, I think they're let me trade once again, dragging out Evil Panda Squad. Two tanks going up north. Most tanks still staying up in the middle. Uh, Probably because they know that uh, Lemming Train are in the middle so much, and they will obviously be cross-fired if they do head up across the, mi the, m the middle of the field. So uh, for, for Poto Mako, he just needs to make sure that he consistently provides that pressure, spots out, uses his tier one to go forward, maybe even just send it in the cap, because if you do send in the cap, then you have the T32, which has so much, uh, f so much armor that it will just be able to continually punish anything that just try and stop the cap there. Is Enef New Multi Show now? heading up the uh, trench, uh, perhaps just trying to find their way into this game, maybe look towards the cap. Uh, but there is that one tank which is really annoying up in the K-line because you have to actually commit to kill it. You can't just snipe it out. It can just sit there, pop his little turret over the top. Unless you get a pixel shot, you just simply won't be able to take it out. Uh, at least for the two T-69s, they're going to be staying in the middle using that hull down uh, ability from the T-178 turret. And Sky Spirit and, and Carmen having a little duel with those T-1s. Um, but I think for Lemming Train, they can just push around, take out Sky Spirit, and really lose any HP as long as they don't get in line of sight of those T69s over towards the right side. I'm, I'm waiting to see what Evil Panda Squad do with this here, because they've got some great ground behind them. They've actually finally got a little bit of map control growing here. But can they make that final move? As you mentioned, those T69s laying in wait around the back. It is Snip, I believe, who's going to be keeping his eyes over the, uh, the the cap point. So if Xena or any of the teammates do decide to kind of go towards it, it will be him kind of uh, ringing the alarm bell. But they've backed away then. No, they haven't. That's my eyes going incredibly weird. And we are just going to see who's going to make that first move. Uh, a couple of tanks now uh, almost right in the center of, of Lemming Train's cap there. You can see Butcher does take down Sky, Sky Spirit in that T1. So first frag going 
to Lemming Train, but Evil Planet Squad, I think, have the better positions. They are literally on tentooks. They're literally sitting next to the cap. Uh, New Multi Show probably will sit up behind to provide the firepower uh, from that brilliant AMX 5100, and then uh, Zenith and the, uh, and the T69 will just be there just to cap in. And Lemming Train might actually fall victim to this just because they have so many tanks spread out across the map. You know, they have a tank in the middle, a couple of tanks over towards the left lower village area, and they've got Potomako on the other side in that T32, which is the most ridiculously slow tank in the world. He won't be able to get back to the base in time to stop anything, and he is the ideal tank to stop the cap, but he does look like he's actually heading down. Maybe this could be the first move from Lemming Train. May just be the uh, alarm bell surely rang. We are seeing a bit of a retraction coming from Evil Pan Squad. They're backing away down once again that eight line. They're just like driving back and forth. They're enjoying themselves. And at the moment, four minutes and 38 seconds left. There's, there's going to be a move pretty darn soon. Probably Mako laying off a couple of shots, but Sony keeping eyes on, literally surrounded by the enemy here. And we do see a shot coming through. No connections just yet. Let's see who's going to make that first move, because this is such a close game now. Whoever makes that first mistake, and Sony's just keeping eyes on these guys, and they have no idea where he is. This is beautiful play coming out. Just finally pops up, calm and ringing the alarm bell. Materius takes no time to kind of remove that factor. But the game was kind of given up there. Already, Evil Panda Squad have the information they need to get into the ideal positions to deal with any push Lemming Train may have had in mind. Exactly, they're running back uh, towards their base. Oh, well, whether they have the tanks in the right position, I, I don't think so. Lucas Histi is the only one really there right now. Okay, he has a tank coming up behind, uh, but the tanks in the middle can just be blocked off and stopped. You can see Lemming Train have tanks there. As soon as they start driving across the field, they're able to get side shots on perfect for Lemming Train. So it's all up to Lucas Histi and Ace in those two T69s to stop this push from uh, Poto Mako uh, there in his uh, T32. He does get spotted out. Obviously, uh, no camera value on that T32, what to speak uh, whatsoever. Um, but Lemming Train now heading up back again. Carmen does get taken out by Lucas Histi. That wasn't a great move because that tier one obviously is so important for the cap. Um, but uh, Evil Planet Squad just, just really reactionary right now. They're trying things but they're not really committing into it. Then they're just reversing and going back to whatever Lemming Train are doing. Lemming Train are completely dictating the pace of play here. Yeah, and to this point, it's clearly working for them. They obviously have those two maps in the bag, but, you know, Evil Panthers can kind of mirror the game to an extent. They can play quite passively to an extent, but how long can you allow the opponent, who's already two maps up on you, to keep leading this one? It's got to come to an end at some point. These guys are going to have to turn up because... Right now, they've been very, very quiet, and Zenith takes an absolute pounding from Alien there. He's just going to back away, kind of make sure he's not going to outstay his welcome here. Good choices being made, and already kind of expecting a little bit of passive play coming out from Evil Panda Squad, and he's right to believe so. They're just trying to tuck themselves into any sort of uh, camo or trees or any sort of cover they can find, because at the moment, they're losing the ground second by second to the Lemming Train. Yeah, that's for sure. The map control is going... Uh, currently in favour to Lemming Train, um, but uh, Evil Panel Squad quite happy to sit back. Lemming Train also just uh, apart from Elian, who seems to be probing, as, I, as you said, you know he did catch out Zenith there in his MX 3090. No one else is really doing that much. Even Poto Mako is heading back um, up towards the uh, D line. So uh, at the moment, both teams once again just not willing to push forwards. And obviously, we still have one minute and, and around 45 seconds left towards the end of this battle, but they just don't seem to be willing to push forwards. They don't seem to be willing to try uh, and take the win. Whether Evil Panda Squad should do that, I'm not sure. It's because debatable. It is exactly. debatable. Exactly. They, they're 2-0 down. But Lemming Train, at least, they have the option of throwing one map. They have the option of throwing two maps. They might as well try something, because quite often it does actually end up working. So um, it's just another question for the, obviously, uh, the interview afterwards if Lemming Train do end up winning here. And so it does look like that way. But Zenith on his own, completely unsupported. Okay, he has a couple of tanks around him. Um, he could be taken out here. This is maybe uh, Lemming Train's next tactic. Although Nia Pazorni does get caught out in the MX-5100, now down to 1-1. One, one. 8-2, not a particularly uh, damaging blow. The MX-3090 just doesn't do any damage at all. 250 average. Um, so he's not really going to be doing a, cru a crucial blow. Potomako sitting up and towards the sea line, getting himself back uh, over overlooking the enemy's cap. 40 seconds left. Do you see anything happening? 
Well, to be fair, Lemming Train are starting to edge the way forward. They are not far away from Evil Panda Squad at all. And they could actually be making a move here. Eclipse is literally steps around the corner. There's a bit of a bottleneck. No, will they walk into this one? 25 seconds left. They are being surrounded right now. If they go for this, they could be in trouble. Materius is edging forward. He's going to be going for the engagement. He's got one, but here comes the other fire coming through. 17 seconds left. Keep your eyes on those health bars. Anyone falling could tip the game the other way. Alien quickly gets involved. Eclipse going low. One for... Oh, he gets taken down by Alien. Finally, an advantage comes through, but Materius so desperately low. There has to be a reactive play because I believe the tier points are just about tipping in favour. They are definitely in favour. Lemming Train taking another win, taking the score three to nil on Abby. You can see Carmen there, so happy. Absolute fantastic play. Uh, they will be playing all five maps, but great games by, uh, by Lemming Train. Uh, obviously, the, the happiness on their face, but yeah, that was 100% down to the tier points. Because they managed to take out that last tank, that was Eclipse, and also Sky Spirit and Sony were down the two tier ones. So uh, Lemming Train didn't lose a single tank, whilst uh, Evil Pan Squad did end up losing three. Yeah, indeed. It was, that was such brave play as well. These guys in that last 10, th you know, 20 seconds almost just went for it. There was a bottleneck available, and to push through could have been their undoing. That could have been them almost out of this. There were tanks literally on both sides. It could have fallen so badly against them, but they took the risk. Finally, a team kind of stepped up and went, all right, let's do this one. Let's try this out. And the Brave team seems to walk away with a victory 3-0 to zero right now. There were draws involved, but I don't think it was really an engagement draw. It was more of a play passively, play carefully draw. So very, very interesting stuff coming out from these two teams. Evil Panda Squad, certainly not what they looked like last time around in these offline events. Very different kind of start for them. Uh, and they just need to kind of rally themselves back up together. You know, they, they've lost to a team they've previously beaten in uh, situations like this. But, you know, there's been a lot of progression from Lemming Train. You know, and it's, it's, it's been a long time since they've kind of met under these circumstances now. And certainly, uh, Lemming Train looking the stronger of the two. Evil Pan Squad, time to go back to that drawing board. Maybe look over what just happened and go, why did that go so wrong? Because they barely showed up in that game. And I'm a big fan of those guys as well. And to say it, it's a bit of disappointment. Yeah, I 100% agree with you there. You know, not only didn't they show up, but also Lemming Train had every answer to, uh, to every question that uh, Evil Panda Squad threw out. Uh, you know, on Ensk, when they pushed around, uh, you know, Lemming Train pushed into the cap. On Himmelsdorf, uh, Evil Panda Squad headed up towards the, uh, towards the, the, the uh, castle, onto the hill. Uh, Lemming Train pushed around again, putting the tanks in the cap. And then on Abbey, uh, Lemming Train had the other plan of just taking that one tier 8 tank down, knowing that they have the two tier 1s down at the end and just winning on tier points. Well, I think we better hear from the man himself who's been kind of telling you the tactics to the team, making all those calls and maybe that last final call of make that push is the one I want to know about. How much kind of, uh, well, it was all riding on his neck pretty much. If he made that wrong call then he'd be the one getting his neck on the kind of chopping board. So let's pass over to Mitch standing with Carmen and see exactly how he felt about that last moment. Yes, thank you guys. Have a drink of water, have a little bit of a break. I'm here on stage with Come On, and that was an absolute marathon of a game. Probably something you've seen before, I guess, uh, definitely going up against uh, EPS. We know that they're a bit more passive. Tell me, how do you break the deadlock? You, you get to third game on Abbey, time is down to a minute and a half. How do you make sure that you have a plan to break through their defences without losing your tanks and losing your tier points? Uh, we were sure that we have a T1, we, uh, so we could rush and lose one of the tier 8 tanks. We were sure that one tank, uh, Ilian, the, cru the crucial thing was the Ilian plan, and that he went uh, to the uh, Abbey side without the spot, and he spotted T690 of the probably Eclipse. Yeah. Uh, then there was a decision made by Ilian and uh, Meritorious that they will go, go together and try, because it is already third game and we have a chance because we are in the better positions. It all went well, we had a bit of luck because, uh, because uh, Eclipse was on fire, but also Multishow had the luck because he was on 70 HP. It was, uh, so it was a good game. Two, be, uh, two before games, we didn't want to rush, we didn't want to be, most, uh, to, to be uh, too aggressive, we want to win this game, and uh, we win, so it is a great game. It was not easy for us, it was tough, uh, tough games. And I hope it means that we will, it will be like we'll win this uh, second place because like the guys. 
and but they will be still in the tournament. All right, so next up, we're going to see Denova go up against Kazna Crew. Um, for those at home, who, you know, who are we looking out for there? What are you, what are you expecting from that game? Uh, to be honest, I cannot tell uh, the favorite of this game. Uh, Denova had a bit of changes in, the, in their lineup. It's more Ukrainian team now. Uh, they have a great skill, great mechanics, but I don't know how they work on the lands. It's never worked for them well. But maybe it's a bit of difference here because it's not that big crowd. It's a bit more or less people than Gamescom, but still great atmosphere. Yeah. But uh, Kazna is also great prepared. Uh, they were playing heavily, so it will be a tough match. I hope, uh, I hope the better will be win, and we will win with them and be playing tomorrow. Thank you very much for your time, Carmen. Congratulations and celebrate that win with your boys. Now, if you are an EPS fan, don't be too sad. They will drop down into the loser's bracket, but they will have an opportunity to move through to tomorrow's play. Well, as I just said earlier on, we are going to be seeing Denova and Kazda Crew go head-to-head -head in a moment. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, relax. Give yourself a bit of a massage. Maybe your, maybe your mate, you can trade massages. Just chill out. We're going to be uh, looking towards our next match very soon. But in the meantime, we're going to go to a short break. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't go too far. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back to the first day of the Wargaming.net League EU Season 3 Finals. I'm Melly, your social media host for everyone that just tuned in. Welcome being a part of our lovely audience. Well, that was an intense match. It was pretty close, even we had a lot of draws. 
I must say. But some part of the community is surely not happy with the ending because, well, Evil Partner Squad is definitely the winner of the whore, uh, heart. Well, this has a lot of sympathy, uh, sympathy, sympathy from the community, and um, yeah. It shows it the best. The best indicator for that is that our Facebook vote, as it started off, it was a clear 100% for Evil Panda Squad, which changed during the match, of course. It ended up with a proper 86% for Lemming Train, which managed to fi uh, to finally get a 3-0 win vi victory. It just it can't describe it any different. So, congratulations to Lemming Train for deciding the first matchup of the finals for in their favor and. Um, yeah, for everyone that just tuned in, as I said, head over to our social media pages on Facebook and Twitter and become part of our network to just talk to me maybe by using the hashtag WGLEU and I will read every tweet and um, I'm not only saying that I'm reading every tweet, I have to prepare something, I'm sorry, and uh, I'm actually doing it. So I prepared some tweets uh, from the community, which were pretty nice, so if we have a quick look on, our, on my monitor, I could show you. David, for example, said, it's amazing to see the teams go at it, and how Lemming Train did a great job defending the cap on Ensk. Next tweet is from Nino, thank you Wargaming for improving the esports scene and investing into it. As you see, m loads of positive feedback from the community. We love that you love our production and we, we're hoping for a lot of great games to go. And well, as I said, we have some challenges prepared for our online audience and for our offline audience. For online audience, I would like to see how you watch the finals. Just take a picture of the location you watch the finals and maybe we'll see some pictures from the venues in, in the times of mobile devices or somebody sitting in, in their living room and enjoying maybe uh, the production on a big, a big screen or maybe a beamer, I don't know. Just surprise me, take a picture and tweet me by the use of hashtag WGLEU and I will definitely have a look at it. And I think you might win some bonus codes. I know that you like these. And for the people here in the venue, we have some cardboard prepared for you guys. So, and some pens lying around. If not yet, I will make sure that they, that they will be here in like a few minutes. And I want you guys to draw fan signs for your favorite teams. Just grab a pen, just grab a piece of paper and draw something nice to 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 cheer for your team. So that's that was the simple word I was looking for. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the show so far. And we'll be back after a quick break. For you guys at home, it's only enough time to grab some drinks and some snacks. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in, in a few.